Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto learn early Rasengan and combine it with Crystal Release Part 1 before I start please do support for more amazing content and comments for Part 2. Do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well. Let's start the video. Anoha was having a nice morning, the sun was just coming over the horizon, painting the sky and few clouds pink orange color. People were just getting out of bed and things were starting to get busy again, yet in one of the many alleyways that filled Kanoha a small boy with blindingly bright blonde hair and sky blue eyes was just pulling himself out of the garbage. He wore a tattered white shirt and brown shorts that were just as torn. This boy was Naruto Uzumaki also known as the Demon of Kanoha. Yesterday had been his birthday, a day that normally young children should have been excited about. A day that they should be out playing with their friends and enjoying sweets. But for Naruto, it was the day that he had to abandon his apartment and find some place to hide from the villagers. October 10th was a day that six years ago the nine-tailed fox had attacked Kanoha and killed many ninja citizens, and it had also taken the life of the village's own fourth Hokage. Naruto happened to have the lucky chance of being born on that day, and as such got a front row seat to the fourth, sealing the demon inside of him. This led to a lot of hate from the majority of the citizens who had lost family and friends. Sadly the fools could only see the poor five-year-old as the Kaiubi incarnate and treated him as such, but adhered to the law of the third, who'd taken the office back after the death of his successor. The third Hokage as much as he was a grandfather to Naruto, was a bit oblivious to the boy's troubles and didn't have the backbone needed to stand up to the civilian council who made Naruto's life a living hell. Your health is low, find medical assistance quickly. Naruto could only blink a bit as he looked at the message that had suddenly appeared in front of him. The boy was honestly too tired to even bother freaking out. He could only stare at the small bar in the corner of his vision that held his health. Health 22 hundredths. Takra 1000 1000ths. Stamina 1000 1000ths. Naruto stared blankly at the health bar as it slowly gained more points as he regenerated health. Then it slowly started to pick up the pace and his health began returning with greater speed than before. 52 hundredths. 72 hundredths. 102 hundredths. 142 hundredths. 192 hundredths. 202 hundredths. Wow, Naruto always knew that he regenerated fast, but he didn't know that it was that fast. Health is full, would new user like a tutorial? Naruto simply nodded and thought, yes. The blue screen disappeared before a different screen appeared in front of him. Customize selection screens. Again the answer was a simple yes that Naruto thought in his head. Those a background color, a word color, and a border color. Underneath the words were small tabs that allowed for Naruto to set the different colors, he set the background color to orange which was his favorite color. The word color was set to black, so it could easily contrast with the background, and the border was set to black as well. Select username. Naruto frowned, if this was happening why didn't his name automatically input? A small keyboard appeared in front of Naruto, and he typed in his name carefully and slowly, making sure to capitalize his first and last name. Is your username Naruto Uzumaki? Naruto nodded and tapped the yes button that appeared underneath the words. Naruto Uzumaki. 0200, X, no class level. 2. Points to spend 5. Strength 5. Agility 2. Endurance 10. Vitality 10. Intelligence 5. Takra 1000. Control 1. Strength is the amount of damage that you can do, whether it is with weapons or barehanded. It also determines the amount that you can carry on you, not counting the items in your inventory. Strength can also be a factor in your speed. Agility is the biggest factor in your speed, flexibility, and just around ability to dodge attacks. Somebody with high agility will have an easier time avoiding attacks and similarly landing them. Endurance is the greatest factor in your stamina meter, which determines how long you can physically last in a fight. High endurance is needed for long and drawn-out fights, or just for running away and training for long periods of time in general. Endurance can also be tied with the amount of damage that you take. Vitality is directly tied to the amount of health that you have and is a low factor in the amount of endurance that you have. Vitality is the biggest factor in deciding how much damage an attack does to you. Intelligence is connected to how well you take in information and how easily it is to use that information to come up with plans and strategies in the field. Takra is the amount of chakra that one has and the more one has is generally better, although it can be hard to control. The more chakra one has the more ninjutsu they can perform. But if you start out with a lot of chakra and little control, it will take more work to control all the chakra. Control is well the amount of control you have over your chakra and stamina. More control also has to do with your emotions, seeing as more self-control can help control emotions such as rage and sadness and get rid of some of the negative debuffs they might have in the middle of battle. Some notes. When using chakra, running out of chakra will lead you to start using your physical stamina, and when you run out of stamina, you will start cutting into your health. When you run out of health, it's game over and you die. 
it's a good idea to have at least two of the same type of weapon on hand, seeing as you might break the weapon or get disarmed in the middle of a fight or in a dungeon. The same thing goes with armor, and if exact copies aren't possible, then keep the old armor seeing as it might just save your life one day. Naruto just kept reading the words over and over again, for what seemed to be an hour until the words burned themselves into his mind. He then noticed a small button at the bottom of the floating screen page 1 of 5. Naruto flicked his hand as if moving the screen to the side, and the page turned. Skill 3. Aimer's Mind Level. Allows for you to think things clearly and thoughtfully, negative status effects such as insanity and confusion are completely negated through this ability. Notes. A skill tree is a list of all the skills that you pick up and learn throughout your adventure. Here when you learn an ability you can upgrade it when you have skill points, which can quickly level a skill up. It is also possible to learn new skills through the skill tree, although learning a new skill through this means that you have to use a certain amount of points to actually obtain it. For example if you were to learn an ability such as clone technique, you would have to pay 5 skill points. Although trying to learn something such as water release. Violent water wave would take more points. Prerequisites are ignored when using this method, but the cost of learning the technique and the price of using said technique will be increased depending on what you learn. Naruto nodded, that seemed fair to learn something that he'd normally not be able to learn normally, but at a higher price. Again Naruto swiped his hand to the side and moved onto the third page, before a figure jumped down from the rooftops and landed in front of Naruto. Naruto jumped, startled that the figure just appeared out of nowhere, until he realized that it was just Inu, the Anbu that watched after him most of the time. There you are Naruto, where were you all night? The apartment was trashed and I was worried sick. Inu gathered the small form of Naruto in his arms, before hauling him out of the ally and onto the rooftops, where he immediately began heading towards Naruto's apartment, which was most likely trashed from the villagers breaking into and destroying everything in the festival last night. The trip didn't last very long, Inu was one of the faster Anbu. Setting Naruto outside of his trashed apartment, Inu began to sift through the rubble for anything that could be remotely salvaged. About 10 minutes later, Inu came out of the apartment and shook his head before picking up Naruto again, who had only stared blankly back at Inu. That was something that worried the Anbu, normally the small child was very vocal and easy to anger, but now he looked half dead to the world. Inu picked up Naruto and decided that he was going to head back to his own apartment with the child. There Naruto could sleep without anybody bothering him, and then Inu was going to talk to the Hokage about this. He didn't know what happened, but Inu was determined to get to the bottom of everything. Jumping away from Naruto's wrecked apartment Inu brought the small child to his own apartment, which was larger by a fair bit than Naruto's. Inu set the Naruto on the bed with the instructions, don't leave the apartment. Before he took off towards the Hokage's tower. Of course Naruto wasn't going to leave the apartment, he'd just been given a place to stay by his favorite Anbu, who acted like a brother to him most of the time, and he had to read the rest of the tutorial which lay unmoving in front of his face. He was currently on page 3 which was explaining the inventory. It was pretty simple, the inventory would be made up of about 20 different square blocks that could each hold an infinite amount of items without worrying about weight. Sighing Naruto turned the page and read its contents which were focused on something that piqued Naruto's interest, he liked what he saw very much. Special powers. Special powers are only obtainable through the use of special tokens which can be obtained through difficult quests, certain points in the storyline, getting achievements, defeating bosses, you will get a token every 10 levels, and it's possible to get a token through defeating rare monsters and powerful shinobi. Special tokens can be used for numerous things, a few examples are turning in tokens for 40 stat points or 40 ability points. Special tokens can be used to also unlock different powers, whether it be lost bloodlines, bloodlines used today, or even special abilities used by people alive and dead alike that aren't bloodlines. For example, a token can be used to unlock a bloodline such as the wood released used by the first tokage. But after you unlock it, it will be up to you to train it so that the power is usable on the battlefield. You currently have one special token. Naruto was confused about how he got that special token and tapped on the words, and luckily, he got something. You received the token when you unlock the achievement, 5 years, which requires reaching the age of 5 without dying. Naruto blinked at that for a moment, reaching certain ages without dying could be considered an achievement. Naruto shrugged mentally before going back to see what he could potential spend the token on. Bloodlines. Techniques. Turn in for stat points. Turn in for ability points. Naruto thought about it for a while before pressing on the bloodlines, he knew that the village loved their bloodlines, like they loved family, and maybe if he had one, he could gain the trust of the village. Bloodline release, an ability limited to only certain people. Bloodline release varies from person to person. Bloodline release can be either something like the Sharingan, Kapi Wee Lai, or a special type of elemental ninjutsu like Boil Release. 
Techniques such as the Nara's shadow manipulation do not count as a bloodline release, seeing as they are a set of techniques that only one clan knows that secrets of and don't really require genetic material of the clan to use. Purchase which bloodline release? Sharingan, Iakugan, Ice Release, Scorch Release, Magnet Release, Crystal Release, Explosion Release, Storm Release, Wood Release, Lava Release, Oil Release, Dust Release, all the different types of release confused Naruto, there was so much that he could get, and yet he didn't know what to get. So he tapped on the first bloodline, the Sharingan. Sharingan the famous bloodline of the proud Ichiha clan, normally unlocked only in life and death situations. Each Tomo surrounding the eye increases the level of the Sharingan. When there are three Tomo, the user of the Sharingan is capable of copying ninjutsu, if they see the hand signs being performed and the technique itself, they can see through Jinjutsu and cast some Jinjutsu, as well as the user's perception of time is slowed down, and they can predict an opponent's moves. Although the Ichiha protect this bloodline jealously and anybody seen with this is either slaughtered on the spot or barely tolerated, if they happen to have enough power. Naruto though it sounded cool, but the part about getting slaughtered by the Ichiha if he was seen having this wasn't so cool, he'd rather live than have something like that. By Akugan the famous bloodline of the proud Hyuga clan, this normally takes training to unlock, and when it does unlock, the user gains almost 360 degree sight when activated. The user can see another's chakra coils, and it acts like X-ray vision to an extent. The Hyuga much like the Ichiha guard their by Akugan jealously and anybody seen with this is killed on the spot or given the caged bird seal. Much like the first, two of the great clans in Konoha didn't want anybody touching their famous eyes. And it would be questionable if Naruto walked around with a Byakugan like he was a part of the Hyuga clan. The elemental bloodline sounded much better, and when he read through them all, Naruto finally made his choice on which one that he wanted. The token count was taken down to zero, and Naruto could feel himself a little more powerful. The description said that he'd have to practice with the bloodline, but at least when Naruto finally got the hand of everything, he'd hopefully be accepted by Konoha. Now he was going to sleep because he hadn't slept in a proper bed for a day, and sleeping with the garbage wasn't all that fun. So he curled up and the menu in front of him disappeared before he fell asleep. Akashi, also known as Inu walked through the front door of the Hokage Tower and requested a meeting with the third Hokage. Kakashi didn't have to wait long, Suratobi took any opportunity to get away from the bane of all cages, paperwork. Kakashi took off his mask as soon as he entered the office and crossed his arms as Suratobi smiled at Kakashi. So what do I owe this visit to? Saratobi, hailed as the professor and the god of shinobi in his prime, was now an old man. Still powerful nonetheless, but not as much as he was in his prime. Now instead of training a lot, he was stuck behind a desk doing paperwork and overseeing missions done by Gen and teams. It's about Naruto. Those three words made Saratobi seize up and stare at Kakashi's one eye, I found him this morning curled up in an alley covered in trash. His apartment was destroyed and very much unlike him, he didn't have any of his usual energy. Suratobi sighed, he was afraid for Naruto, but he just didn't have the backbone to stand up to the civilian council, which did their best to make Naruto's life as hard as possible. I'd personally like to adopt Naruto, I hate seeing him without that usual energy. So please tell me why I can't honor Minato's last wishes to take care of the boy to the fullest. The civilian council Suratobi was immediately cut off by Kakashi slamming his fist on the table, has no power over you. God damn it. You are the Hokage, the leader of the village, and you're letting yourself be pushed around by a bunch of powerless civilians. Saratobi didn't like it either, I can't let him be adopted because of the council. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. The Kashi's head dropped and he sighed, really. Like I said, powerless civilians and you are the Hokage, the most powerful ninja in the village. You're acting like a puppet for the council. The Kashi then stormed out of the office, if the Hokage wasn't going to let him officially adopt Naruto, then he was going to do it unofficially. Basic tutorial completed, reward 100 exp. 10 kunai, 10 shuriken. These were the words that Naruto woke up to. Since the weapons didn't just appear in his lap, the boy assumed that they were in his inventory. He was still in Inu, or Kakashi's apartment. Naruto knew who Inu was, but preferred to call him Inu when he had the Anbu mask on. It just seemed more appropriate than calling him Kakashi in his Anbu gear. Getting out of the bed, Naruto walked into the main room of the apartment and saw Kakashi sitting on the couch reading a small orange book. When the man noticed Naruto walk into the room, he quickly put away the book. You hungry Naruto? Kakashi asked in his normal mellow voice. Naruto perked up and then start running around the apartment shouting about Raymond and Ichikaris. Kakashi only chuckled before he put his hand on Naruto's head which immediately stopped the boy. Let's go get some Ichikaris then. Kakashi was thankful that he'd withdrawn a quarter of his savings, he was going to need it just to feed Naruto. He could feel his wallet getting lighter already. Naruto had quickly gotten used to life after Kakashi had quickly started taking care of him. 
it had been a few months since his apartment had been trashed and also when he'd started living in Kakashi's apartment. Naruto, quickly taking the opportunity to beg Kakashi day and night to train him so he would be a better Hokage, had been happy when Kakashi started teaching him how to use kunai and shuriken. Kakashi had caved after a few more weeks of enduring Naruto's begging and began to teach the boy some tojutsu. Naruto took to it like a fish in water, and while Kakashi wouldn't say that he'd mastered it by the end of the week, the boy was a pretty solid genin level. Naruto when he put his mind to something just didn't stop and he kept going and going. Kakashi was proud of his surrogate little brother's progress and dedication, if he kept going like that he'd make a fine ninja. Naruto however, only felt the need to push himself, he wanted to master the skills that Kakashi had granted him. Kunai and Shuriken Throwing, Level 4, a skill that shows how accurate you are with Kunai and Shuriken and also tells how much damage you do when you hit somebody. Plus 30% accuracy when throwing Kunai and Shuriken, plus 20% damage when landing a hit with Kunai and Shuriken. Kunai Combat, Level 3, a skill that determines how good you are at using Kunai and small knives in combat when you don't throw them. Plus 10% damage when slashing and stabbing with Kunai and small knives. Plus 10% speed when using kunai and small knives in combat. Basic Tejutsu, Level 6. Basic Genin Tejutsu, more advanced than Academy Tejutsu, but not as advanced as Junin level. Determines basic damage and defense when using this Tejutsu. Plus 15% damage when using this Tejutsu style. Plus 10% defense when countering and blocking with this style. Plus 5% speed when using this style. Naruto felt like it wasn't enough seeing as Kakashi was almost level 48 and Naruto was barely level 4. But then again Kakashi had years of training and Naruto had only started his training a few weeks ago. It was to be expected after all, but Naruto still felt like he had to get stronger. After all, how was he supposed to be Hokage if he couldn't be stronger than Kakashi, who was like his older brother? Naruto just shook his head and began punching the post again and again. His stats had taken a turn for the better when he'd started training and instead of being so low, they'd risen. Naruto Uzumaki, 300 700s, X, points to spend 20, strength 12, agility 8, endurance 14, vitality 14, intelligence 7, Takra 1200, control 5, health 240, Takra 1200, stamina 1400, Naruto currently was known as in gaming terms, a glass cannon he could dish it, but he couldn't take it as much. He was working on his defense, but that was hard to do. What Naruto wanted was a sort of chakra technique that could allow him to sacrifice some chakra in order to protect his health. He didn't know if the library had a technique like that, but he was pretty sure with all the books there that it had to have something like what he was looking. Congratulations. Due to your hard training your strength has increased by one. Naruto stared at the message before taking a short break, he'd be doing this for a while, and his strength had increased quite a bit. But of course he'd been ignoring all the stat points that he had, he was still thinking whether he wanted endurance or more control over his chakra so that he could start using the bloodline he'd gotten to more effect. But then again he could just split up the points into both to increase both at the same time. So bringing up his vitality to 24 and his control up to 15, Naruto took a look at his health again, it was now 440. He'd almost doubled his health and he felt like he could control his chakra much better than before. This was just amazing, he could actually chose what he wanted to get better when he leveled up. Naruto closed out of his stats and rested for a few more minutes, Kakashi would probably come out to pick up Naruto soon, so the boy decided to simply head back. He was pretty happy with the advancement today, but tomorrow was going to be a different story. Tomorrow he was going to be working on his agility with the help of Kakashi. They were going to be practicing with rubber balls to help Naruto with his dodging. But with Naruto's impatience, that seemed like a long way off. Yeah look at her weird eyes. She doesn't have pupils or even irises, what kind of freak is she? Naruto's head turned in the direction of the voice, only to see in the distance from where he was training was three boys and one girl who was backed up against a tree. Naruto's face morphed into a scowl, he hated bullies and had absolutely zero tolerance for them. All of his exhaustion from training was seemingly forgotten as he stomped over to where the bullies were, about 300 meters away from his training post. Why doesn't the freak apologize for running into us? The tallest of the boys and most presumably the leader of the trio of bullies said, before kicking the knees of the girl and pulling on her hair. With each taunt, insult and jeer the boys threw at the girl and Naruto became more and more angry until his walk turned into full-blown sprint towards the bullies. When he reached the clearing the bullies were in, Naruto already in a full-blown sprint, jumped as far as he could angling himself in the air. When the head bully turned towards the sound he heard, he got about 50 pounds of Naruto to the face, feet first. The head bully was knocked off his feet and not surprisingly knocked out. The other two bullies who were too surprised to do anything could only stare as the boy who just came flying in launched his fist into the second bully's chin, knocking him up into the air before he crashed down onto his back. 
the third bully attempted to flee, only to turn around and get a kick to the back for his efforts and land face first into the dirt. Naruto cracked his knuckles and growled, grab your friend and get out of here, unless you all want to end up eating dirt. Naruto chuckled mentally as he watched the boys grab their friend and run away as fast as they could. Naruto turned towards the girl and held up a hand before giving her the warmest smile he had. I hope they didn't hurt you. I'm Naruto by the way, what's your name? He smiled and helped her to her feet. The girl had pale eyes and violet hair. She was a bit shorter than Naruto, but not by much. I I am fine. Mm my name I I is Hinata she stuttered out, there was a slight flush to her face. Are you sure you're okay, your face is really red. Naruto's leaned into the girls, making sure that she was okay. The girl turned as red as a tomato, and Naruto backed off for a second before putting his hand on her forehead and the other hand on his forehead. Nope you don't have a fever. Are you sure you're okay Hinata? Naruto asked, and then Hinata fell over her face red and steam coming from her ears. Naruto could only tilt his head in confusion, he'd no idea what he'd done. So the most he could do was set her gently against the tree. He sat next to her, hoping that she would wake up soon. And Kakashi chose that specific time to show up before looking at Isin in front of him. Kakashi smirked underneath his face mask and nodded his head, you work fast Naruto. I mean, I was a lady killer in my time, but I could never work this fast. Naruto could only start stuttering as bad as Hinata, and his face was just as beet red. I I I, D didn't do uh, anything. I I, S S swear. Kakashi smiled, I know you didn't, I'm just teasing you. Now come on, let's take her home. Kakashi picked up the girl, and Naruto stood up alongside his surrogate older brother. You know where she lives? Yes, Hinata is the Hyuga heiress. Normally she's not allowed off the grounds due to her training, but she must have gotten a rare day off, but somebody must have been following her. I wonder if they purposefully left her. Kakashi frowned. He honestly had no idea why Hinata was out of the Hyuga clan's mansion, but she was going to need to be returned, or many people were going to suffer the wrath of the Hyuga. Nobody wanted that, so Kakashi took off at a rather slow pace for Naruto, who was now realizing that his stamina was rather low from all the training that he'd recently done. Naruto could keep pace with Kakashi and followed him as they headed from the training area to the Hyuga mansion. Naruto knew vaguely about the famous clans in Konoha, Kakashi had elected to train Naruto instead of teach him, preferring to leave that to the academy in about five years. They did a lot of learning in the classroom and very little outside training. Naruto following Kakashi tried to ignore the glares and looks that the people of Konoha were sending his way when they thought that Kakashi wasn't looking. He noticed and frowned, he knew something was up and he had his suspicions, but this just bad. Many of the clothing stores that he'd entered to get Naruto new clothes had sold them at inflated prices and they were of cheap quality. So Naruto had taken to trying to make his own clothes, at first it was just patching up the clothes that got ruined during practice and then he started actually attempting to make clothes. To Kakashi, this was just Naruto's attempt to save him money, but to Naruto, this was his attempt to upgrade a skill that could potentially come in hand later on in life. Not only did the tailoring skill seem pretty awesome, he just needed to get it to a certain level, and he'd be able to make clothes with special effects, such as invisibility and the darker extra durability and defense. Plus he could make some cool clothes that just made him look cool. The Kashi picked up the pace a bit, the Hayuga mansion was farther away than Naruto realized, but he wasn't going to complain, he hardly ever did. But with the jogging pace they were going through the streets, Naruto could only notice as his already low stamina was going down slowly instead of returning. He sighed, he was probably going to be exhausted by the time he reached the apartment, and that was never fun. Bakashi, just go return Hinata to her house, I think I'm going to head back to the apartment before I get there and collapse against the front door again. Naruto said before turning away from the path that they were taking to head back to the apartment. When Naruto made it back to the apartment, he showered and actually made it to the couch before he collapsed. Naruto stared at his stamina which was at zero, and he felt like crap. But when he opened his menu, Naruto finally tapped on a button that he'd been meaning to tap on for a while, advanced tutorial, dungeons, modifiers, status effects, reputation, quests, missions, Naruto just decided to go down the list, it would be easier to get through everything that way. Dungeons a dangerous place normally filled with monsters and strong enemies, but dungeons give extra exp for killing enemies and give strong items that can be used to enhance items. Each dungeon contains four floors or levels, that as you progressively go down, monsters get stronger, loots gets better, and at the end of the second floor, there is a mini boss just like at the end of the entire dungeon, there is a main boss. Mini bosses are normally tougher than the enemies on most floors. But they also give better exp and drop better loot than most of the monsters. Mini bosses usually have a close resemblance to the boss, so look closely at the mini boss's attacks and fighting style, as it is a major clue to how the boss fights. Boss fights are even tougher than the mini-boss and all the enemies. 
bosses have special abilities and normally are capable of inflicting some sort of status effect onto you. Most are capable of summoning minions and have some sort of ability to regenerate health, so boss fights are something not to be taken lightly. But killing a boss is worth it seeing as they drop special loot including weapons, armor, money, that got Naruto's attention quick, special items, modifiers, and much more. When you kill a boss, they have a guaranteed drop of what's known as a special key, which can unlock a chest which can be found in a room right after the boss room. The chest also contains special items, but more along the lines of scrolls and techniques. That seemed cool, but Naruto decided that he could wait until going into a dungeon. He wanted to make sure that he wouldn't kill himself when he went inside. Modifiers items that can be added to weapons and armor to give them special effects. Each weapon and armor is a certain amount of item slots that can fit modifiers. Stackable items such as kunai and shuriken all share the same item slot. Modifiers can be rare drops from regular enemies or just drops from mini bosses and bosses, as well as regular drops from rare enemies. Modifiers don't have durability and can be swapped from item to item with a couple button taps. Modifiers, to Naruto seemed important, items that could add effects to his clothes and weapons, would be invaluable in fights of any kind, whether it be a spar of a boss fight in a dungeon. Status effects Status effects for starters, appear right underneath the health bar. Negative status effects appear in red boxes, while positive status effects appear in green boxes. Status effects can be a simple active skill, or it can be something as serious as poison or paralysis. Negative status effects NSEs, poison paralysis insanity blindness silence disruption confusion unconscious exhaustion cursed, positive status effects Cs, strength up agility up vitality up endurance up intelligence up luck up chakra up control up regeneration immunity purified, reputation reputation matters a lot, and depending on your reputation with somebody positive or negative things can happen. When your reputation is positive with somebody then buying things off that person is cheaper, bonuses with fighting them are increased, and receiving quests from them yields more exp and money. Increase reputation by doing quests and doing different people's special events. Quests missions quests are personal requests from different people, doing a quest can reward you with extra reputation, money, new techniques, information, and possibly special items. Missions however are harder than quests and usually take place outside of Kanoha. Although missions can take place within the village, they will be very difficult. Although completing a mission will reward you with extra exp, reputation, modifiers, and the possibility of new techniques. Naruto nodded at the new information, before he got up from the couch, his stamina had returned somewhat, and it was his turn to make dinner, seeing as it was almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Him and Kakashi had a system, one day one of them would make dinner, and the other would clean up, and then the next day they would switch. Pulling himself into the rather mediocre kitchen Naruto pulled out some pots and pans and started to make rice and vegetables. He'd figured out a while ago that he could level up his cooking skill rather quickly by making high-complexity dishes. And luckily the most complex dishes that he'd made had come out a cookbook and gained him quite a few levels in the cooking skill. Yeah, Kakashi who was a lazy eater, stocked up on spices and all that only to forget that they were there, and when Naruto moved in, he'd started using them in the meals. So Naruto had a pretty good supply of ingredients to play around with. And just like Naruto thought, Kakashi came strolling into the apartment putting away a bright orange book. Naruto knew what the book was and what was inside it. A few weeks ago he'd gotten curious about what Kakashi was always reading. Well Naruto managed to find a stash of books under Kakashi's bed, and when he found Scarecrow again Naruto threatened to castrate Kakashi with a wooden spoon if he read those in his presence again. Kakashi had taken the warning very seriously and made sure to put up the book whenever Naruto was around. It didn't stop Kakashi from leaving Naruto alone to train while he went off to read his books. It's not Raymond, may I ask where the real Naruto went? Shot before I pull the night of hanging prank on you. Naruto snapped flicking the wooden spoon that was covered in boiling water at Kakashi, who shook the water off his clothes. Kakashi shuddered, night of hanging was the worst prank Naruto could pull on anybody. It was bad for anybody. What the prank entailed was that Naruto would spike the victim's food or drink with sleeping drugs. Kakashi being the oh-so-careful man that he was somehow missed when Naruto spiked both of the Raymond cups that night. Naruto being practically immune to drugs woke up later that night only to drag Kakashi to the center of town and hung him by his underwear on a large wooden pole. Kakashi to say he wasn't happy camper to find that when he woke up, it was raining, he was tied to a pole, and he was in his underwear was putting it lightly. He was pissed, but Naruto was laughing so hard he could breath and was rolling around on the floor. Kakashi got Naruto back by ass blasting Naruto. Naruto couldn't sit down for a week, and Kakashi was sick for a week. Ass blasting entailed the horrid and dreadful Kanoha's secret technique. 1000 years of pain. That little excursion then spawned a giant prank war that lasted a month between Naruto and Kakashi, that caused several thousand Ryu in damage to Kanoha and the apartment to be rebuilt twice. 
but damn if it wasn't funny. You know, pulling the nightmare on Valentine's Day or the Saint Orange Day would also be funny. Naruto smirked when Kakashi froze in place, both of those were worse than the first one, because they involved weeks of public humiliation that he couldn't hide from. You do that and I will leave you stuck in the ground for two days this time. Kakashi threatened. At least I'll be able to leave the apartment without getting laughed at by my colleges. Naruto shot back. Kakashi had to give Naruto some credit, he was talking down to a jonin like it was nothing. Most likely because Naruto didn't need to beat somebody up to kill their pride. He just needed to prank them, and they'd stay hell away from Naruto so that it didn't happen again. But the real fun happened when you were pranking with Naruto, because it was hilarious to see the Hokage dressed head to toe in a neon green spandex suit. They had done D ranks for weeks afterwards, but it was so funny. Bakashi had to hand it to Naruto, he made life fun. It had been exactly one year since Naruto had been taken under the care of Kakashi, and his life had improved tremendously, he'd shot up in height and was one of the tallest boys for his age. The clothes that he wore, completely made by himself, were no longer torn up and ragged, instead they were made from high-quality fabric that Kakashi had gotten a hold of and were as durable as regular ninja clothes. His hoodie was a mixture of black and dark burnt orange, with the majority of the hoodie being black and then two stripes of orange down the sides of the sleeves and one down the back. The hood could zip up and hide Naruto's face. Most of the time, he zipped up the hood when he went into public and the difference was astounding. Nobody knew that it was him underneath the hood and they smiled at him and waved hello. It actually scared Naruto the first time that he went into public like that. But eventually he got used to it and much like Kakashi, Naruto started hiding his face. Although he hid his entire face instead of just hiding the bottom half one eye. Along with the hoodie Naruto wore a dark orange shirt underneath, but you couldn't really see it, and brown shorts that reached to just below his knees. The shorts had a lot of pockets, and that was why Naruto liked them. On his feet he had the customary black shinobi sandals, and that was Naruto for you, six-year-old ninja in training, four years away from the academy, and just as strong as any genin out there. Naruto over the past year had gotten into questing a lot, and the amount of experience that he'd gotten from it was amazing. From level 4 all the way to level 10, and he'd been so focused on doing quests that for most of the time and he'd been so focused on training that he had little time to think of where he wanted to put his points. You have 30 points to spend, you have 6 skill points, you have 1 ability token. Naruto had taken the day off from training when Kakashi was out of the village on a mission and he'd sat down and thought about where he wanted to put his points. Naruto Uzumaki level 10, 100 1500, X, points to spend 30, class trainee, strength 24, agility 20, endurance 50, vitality 50, intelligence 15, Takra 7000, control 20. Naruto was worried though, ever since he'd started leveling up, the amount of chakra he'd gotten as well as the amount of endurance and vitality he'd gotten had shot up without stopping, and it had made using basic techniques that he'd been able to perform without difficulty before, very, very difficult. So Naruto was tempted to just pour it all into control so that he'd be able to reign in his chakra. What really worried him though was that he'd found a way to see how much chakra other kids of his age had and they didn't hold a candle to him. A regular orphan his age had almost 500 chakra while he had 7000. It was just insane and he didn't know what was causing it, but as his reserves grew and grew he was having a harder time controlling it all. So he set aside 20 points to put into control, and then with a little more though he even out strength and agility at 25, before he'd add the rest into intelligence. When he was done spending the points he looked back at his stats and then nodded his head, that was what he wanted. Naruto Uzumaki level 10, 100 1500, class trainee, strength 25, agility 25, endurance 50, vitality 50, intelligence 19, Takra 7000, control 40. Grabbing the leaf he'd brought in a half an hour ago, he set it on top of his forehead and tried to get it to stick there. To his surprise it was tremendously easier than before. He figured that the tree walking would be easier and that he'd be able to attempt water walking without submerging a million times. Dang those ponds were freaking cold. But instead of going outside to find a tree to test, Naruto instead turned to his skills which had improved and expanded since the last time he'd seen them. Skills, combat, non-combat, combat skills, throwing ability level 10, improves your aim, damage, and speed when using throwing weapons. Plus 50% accuracy when using throwing weapons, plus 40% damage when using throwing weapons, plus 40% speed when using throwing weapons. Sharp weapons ability level 7 improves your damage, speed, and your chances to inflict, bleeding, or crippled on a target. Plus 30% damage when using sharp weapons, plus 30% speed when using sharp weapons, plus 5% chance to inflict, bleeding, or crippled on a target. Lunt weapons level 4 improves damage, speed, and your chances to inflict, crippled, or unconscious on a target. 
plus 10% damage when using sharp weapons, plus 10% speed when using sharp weapons, plus 3% chance to inflict, crippled or unconscious on a target. Genin Tejutsu level 10 improves your damage, speed and defenses when using Genin Tejutsu, plus 40% damage when using Genin Tejutsu, plus 40% speed when using Genin Tejutsu, plus 30% defense when countering or blocking with Genin Tejutsu. Feral Fighting level 11 improves damage, speed and blocking when using Feral Fighting, plus 40% damage when using using feral fighting, plus 40% speed when using feral fighting, plus 40% defense when countering or blocking with feral fighting. Bloodline Mastery Level 10 Improves the damage, speed, and chakra consumption when using your bloodline, plus 40% damage when using your bloodline, plus 40% speed when using your bloodline, minus 30% chakra consumption when using your bloodline. Naruto could only chuckle how he'd come up with feral fighting to go along with the bloodline that he had, and how well it worked was amazing. It was unpredictable, and not to mention that when Naruto was using it, he gained a positive status effects that allowed him to sense enemies' weak spots which worked well. But he really enjoyed having the bloodline, it was cool in his opinion, but it had to glaring weakness that Naruto planned on fixing when he used the token. Purchase which bloodline? Sharingan, Ayakugan, Ice Release, Scorch Release, Magnet Release, Explosion Release, Storm Release, Wood Release, Lava Release, Oil Release, Swift Release, Steel Release, Dark Release, Dust Release. Naruto tilted his head, there were a couple new bloodlines to chose from, he wondered why that was. Maybe it had something to do with his new level. Naruto selected Ice Release and read over the description one more time. Ice Release, an almost extinct bloodline, only one known user is left in the world. Ice release allows you to freeze water in the air and from nearby water sources. This ice is resistant to heat, electricity, and just about anything. But strong enough forces and lava can melt the ice, but if your ice is dense enough it can resist those too. When using large amounts of ice, it will begin to snow so bundle up. Naruto smiled, but backed out of buying the bloodline, he wanted to see what the steel release did, because he was going for a defensive release, to make up for the fact that the bloodline that he had chosen a year ago, was rather offensive, and although it could be used for defensive purposes, he wanted something to cover the fact that his bloodline had a few weaknesses. Steel release, a very rare and almost extinct bloodline, this allows for the user to create metal weapons from their body, and turn your body to steel, making you nearly indestructible. But this conducts heat and electricity very well so be careful. Naruto frowned, the nearly indestructible part sounded cool, but he wanted something that would resist electricity to cover his weaknesses. So forsaking the steel release Naruto went with the ice release. Congratulations. You have received the achievement of owner of dual bloodlines. You gained 1000 exp. You now have 1100 1500 exp. Naruto smiled, that was cool getting a new bloodline and almost leveling up as well. Getting up Naruto walked out the door and down the side of the building with relative ease. He would need to practice with the wall walking, but he could do it again. And before he went out to test his water walking, Naruto was going to head into his first dungeon. He was confident that now at level 10, he could possibly beat dungeon number 1, which had been taunting him with the average enemy level 3 to 6 for a while now, he wanted to be adequately leveled and prepared before he walked into a dungeon. Bakashi had taught him that information was key, and fighting somebody without information was akin to suicide. But Naruto had the information that enemies while more numerous than just one, they would be several levels below Naruto. So Naruto headed out, dashing across the rooftops his stamina barely going down at all. Bakashi had called him a stamina freak on more than one occasion, and even compared him to his eternal rival, who had stamina in the gallons full. Naruto simply laughed at that, the man in the spandex had scary amounts of stamina. It took five minutes to get from the apartment to the training area where the dungeon was located. Taking a look to make sure that everything was A-OK, -okay, Naruto took one step into the entrance of the dungeon, and immediately a message popped up. Would you like to enter dungeon number one? Average enemy level three to six. Naruto could say with a smile, yes. He'd been pumped to enter a dungeon since he'd gotten to level nine, but decided that it was better to wait until he was level ten. Welcome to dungeon number one. Spider's lair. Spider's, just wonderful he loved spiders. That was sarcastic if anybody couldn't tell. Now he wasn't going to girl out on himself, but spiders were in the same boat as ghost, creepy, and you need to stay away from them. Naruto took one step into the dungeon, and then whispered at a barely hearable level even for himself. Crystal release. Crystalline claws. Immediately crystal began forming from the shoulders all the way down his arms. When it reached his elbows it started expanding and growing off his arm, until it reached his hand and created a claw that had four separate claws, one thumb and four different fingers. The claws themselves were almost four times as large as his regular hand. The crystal also began climbing from his hips down towards his legs, before his feet were covered in a crystal claw as well. But the claws on his feet elevated him some, and there were three claws pointing forward and one pointing backwards. 
this was the technique that worked well with his feral fighting because he had claws that made the skill all the more effective. He took off into the dungeon at a light walking pace, making sure to keep a sharp sense all around himself so he wouldn't get caught unaware by spiders who could easily come from above or behind him. Luckily, the spiders decided to come at him from the front. Spider Worker Level 3, Health 100, okay that didn't look too hard, except the spider was the size of his torso. Granted that wasn't very large, but still put it into perspective it was scary as hell in Naruto, if he didn't remind himself he was the one with the giant ass claws on his arms. It didn't matter then the spiders each had 8 hairy legs and 8 black soulless eyes. Or the fact that the fangs were 3 inches long and dripping with venom. No really it didn't matter all that much. Oh who was Naruto kidding, he started sweating the moment that he saw the men counted to 10 several times. Now now, be good little spiders and die 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 die. Naruto started screaming at the top of his lungs and lunged after the spiders who appeared to be a little startled at him screaming. Naruto curled his claws up into fists and began smashing the heads with as much force as he could. Many spiders died and then they got the idea that they needed to run. Naruto apparently gone into a fearsome rage, started killing everything around him the spiders did not stand a chance. A few minutes later after all the spiders had evacuated the area, Naruto calmed down enough to start picking up what the spiders had dropped. Spider Silk X10, Spider Legs X5, Ryu, 1000, Naruto took one look at the money and began almost drooling over it, that was more than three months worth of allowance from Kakashi. He quickly stuffed into his wallet gama and took off after securing the other items in his inventory of course. Now with the idea that he could gain limitless money from this technique, Naruto began hunting the poor spiders relentlessly, gaining more and more money off of them. Naruto skipped quite a few chests, which were funny enough clean of the spider webs. And still in a money-hungry stupor Naruto carried on into the next dungeon floor, where he quickly snapped out of trance he was in. Instead of a dense forest area, Naruto was now in a cave area, all of it was covered in a light coating of spider webs. Brushing some out of his face, Naruto actually spotted a new enemy to fight. Spider Warrior Level 4, Health 200, Poisonous, Naruto frowned before he continued on towards the enemy, what could 6-inch fangs running with acidic venom to do crystal? The crystal release that covered his hands and feet were immune to just about everything except for electricity. So acid shouldn't affect it right. Then again, his torso and his head were uncovered by the crystal, so he had to watch out for both of those. The spider warrior charged at Naruto who in return backhanded the spider. Now it didn't do as much damage to completely kill it, the spider was obviously wounded from the exchange. It appeared that Naruto had overleveled his skills for the dungeon, but that didn't matter because he felt so ridiculously overpowered and was honestly drunk on the feeling. Grinning the entire time that he walked over to the spider warrior and he stomped on it while it was trying to ride itself. The spider warrior shattered into multicolored blocks of light and out of the light dropped 500 Ryu to which Naruto graciously accepted. Hell, he now had more money that Kakashi had ever given him to spend on Raymond. oh he was going to have a heyday down at Ichiraku's, this was enough to buy himself almost 5 bowls of Raymond. It was sad that he could put away almost 40 at one time. But oh well, Raymond was Raymond and Raymond was the food blessed by the gods. He was upset somebody hadn't made a book that described the story of how Raymond descended from the gods, who gifted mankind with its presence and its taste. Maybe he should do that one day after he became Hokage, because it was going to happen. Suddenly a screech echoed throughout the tunnels, and a message popped up in front of Naruto, its black letters on the orange background allowing him to see. Origer the King Spider has awoken. Naruto wanted to face Palm, but didn't he totally forgotten about the mini-boss, and it appeared that the king was up first. Walking around the corner Naruto came to a massive chamber covered in silk webs and random bones. Naruto hoped that the bones were of animals. Origer the King Spider Level 6, Health 800, Venomous, Giant, Naruto shook his head, the thing in front of him was almost three times his size. Eight long legs stretched out to the sides of it and six piercing eyes stared back at Naruto. Those things had no soul, he could swear on the holy bible of Raymond it was true. God that bible of Raymond sounded like a real thing now but it was covered in sharp and spiny hair and was brown in color. Two foot long fangs stretched in front of it and its spinneret was pointed at Naruto. The moment Naruto stepped into the arena, the exits were sealed off and a thick strand of web was shot out of the spinneret and attached to Naruto's left arm. Naruto was then sent flying towards Origer at high speeds, but he managed to turn in midair and started shooting like a bullet at the Spider King. The king was more agile than what Naruto originally thought and ducked underneath Naruto who was sent rocketing past him and into the rock wall. Health 900 one thousandths, damn. Naruto dislodged himself from the wall and stood on it using his chakra to stick to the wall through his chakra conductive crystal claws, try saying that five times fast because Naruto sure couldn't. Naruto jumped off of the wall and ride onto the king's back who was still getting up from ducking. Origer's health minus 758 hundredths, oh come on. 
I should have done more damage than that. Naruto shouted before he slammed his fists into the back of the spider, who quickly threw him off after that. But now we're both down a hundred health. Naruto grumbled under his breath before charging the giant spider again. The giant spider lifted up one of his legs and tried to impale Naruto, who expertly dodged and grabbed the leg. Lifting the spider up Naruto threw it as far as he could until it crashed into the far wall and fell to the ground on its feet to Naruto's disappointment. Okay let's finish this. Naruto began performing the hand signs that he found worked best for this technique. Horse Ram Snake Rat Tiger Hair Ox Dog Rat Monkey Snake Crystal Release. Shard Storm. The hundreds of crystal shards materialized in the air above Naruto, and all of them flew at insane speeds towards Origer, who could only get impaled by the hundreds of crystals heading his way. Origer's health 10 8 hundredths. Naruto watched as the mini boss dropped the ground, its legs no longer working. Two of the six eyes had been impaled by the crystals, and three of the eight legs had been completely torn off. Blue goopy blood dropped to the ground below the boss, and Naruto walked up to the Spider King and did it a favor by putting it out of its misery. The mini boss shattered into thousands of multicolored pixels, and Naruto picked up the loot that came from Origer. You received Spider Fang X2. You received Spider Silk X1. You received Acid Bile X2. You received Poison Gem, Modifier, Rai, 30,000. Naruto blinked, that was his first modifier. Opening his inventory he read the description of the Poison Gem. Poison Gem A dark green gem dropped by Origer the Spider King. When putting this modifier on armor, it will provide poison resistance, as well as a resistance to acids and digestive fluids. Putting this gem on weapons or attack slots will give a chance to get a shot that will inflict minor nausea and poison on a target. Attack slots are slots that instead of going on weapons, go on arms, legs, and heads. The modifier's effects activated more often when fighting barehanded, but will also activate on a weapon. Thank God for active hints, Hell Naruto would never learn anything without it. But instead of equipping it to an attack slot, Naruto equipped the poison gem to his hoodie and watched as its durability rose slightly and he gained a resistance to poisons and acids. He hoped that he never needed the digestive fluid resistance, getting eaten sounded like the worst thing to ever happen. Standing up quietly, Naruto turned to the end of the chamber where the door to the third floor had opened up. Naruto took one step down the steep tunnel and shivered slightly, he could hear whispers coming from this floor and somehow he didn't think that was good. Naruto was not enjoying the almost unhearable whispers all around him, he could barely hear them and they were just creeping him out to the point that he hadn't even noticed that he'd leveled up due to winning the fight with the mini boss. His stamina was fairly high as was his chakra, using the technique and the crystal claws at the same time wasn't very difficult. Hell, he was only at 6500 7000 chakra which wasn't even a quarter of his reserves, so he felt good enough to take on the boss after this floor. The entire cave walls were covered in extremely sticky spider webs, and Naruto had been unable to get it off his crystal claws. So after giving up a while ago, Naruto just decided to continue on with long strands of white silk hanging from his hands. The floor, thank the Raymond gods was untouched by the silk or Naruto wouldn't have been able to move. And did it seem that the farther down that he went, the smaller the cave walls were getting. He was still walking fine, it was just that the sticky ceiling was inches above his head when on the last floor it had been a few feet above him. That unto itself was unnerving, tight spaces and venomous spiders. Naruto shivered again and reminded himself that after he got out of this that he was going to add spiders onto the stay the hell away from list, right next to ghosts. Nothing could beat ghosts on his stay the hell away from list, you couldn't punch them, and they were just creepy. Hell you could kill a zombie, but ghosts you couldn't touch. But enough about that, Naruto came into a small chamber where the regular enemies of the third floor, funnel webs. Funnel web, health 300. These spiders were much smaller than the Spider King, whose gruesome death was still clear in Naruto's mind. But they had much thicker legs and were much hairier with leathery backsides. Their fangs were thicker than most of the enemies, and venom didn't drip from their fangs. So the fangs were used for biting instead of poisoning. The funnel webs looked at Naruto, six eyes on each of them just blinking and staring at Naruto until one of the funnel webs started shooting needle-like hairs in Naruto, who quickly drew his arms up in an X pattern to protect his chest. The hairs bounced uselessly off the diamond hard crystal. Naruto shot a look through the nearly clear pinkish crystal, the spiders were just sitting there, and so Naruto advanced with his arms in front of him like a shield. When Naruto reached the first funnel web, it jumped at Naruto who grabbed it with his claw and began smashing it into its allies before stomping on them himself. When all of them were gone from the room, Naruto picked up the Ryo and the drops which included more silk, some leather, and a spider eye. Must have something to do with making poison. Naruto was about head out of the room when he heard a sound. Hushing up, Naruto tried to hear if the sound would come back again, it wasn't like all the whispers on the floor. It actually sounded like, squeaking. Naruto listened intently for the next few minutes, locating the source of the sound. After what seemed like half an hour, Naruto managed to find the sound. 
A small red head poked up from underneath the webbing, Naruto gently wrapped the claws around the figure that didn't seem to be very big. Pulling the figure up, it squeaked once more, and then Naruto brought it out of the webs. Naruto looked around making sure that he was alone before he sat down and tried not to lean against the wall. Setting the small animal on the ground in front of him, Naruto let the crystals on his hands fall off so he could work at the webbing surrounding the animal. Gently managing to pick the silk off of the creature, Naruto picked it up again to look at it. It was a baby fox, a little bigger than a kitten or a puppy, and it had been wrapped up in webbing. Naruto felt sorry for the kit, it had been stuck down there for who knows how long with no sunlight, no food, no water, and it probably would have been eaten if Naruto hadn't come along. So flipping back his hood, Naruto placed a small fox inside his hood and made sure that it wasn't going to fall out before forming a bit of crystal around the hood, making him seem like a hunchback or something with a lump of crystal covering the hood and the fox. Hey, he didn't want to take chances that the boss might hit him a couple times, but the fox would be safe and comfortable in there. Naruto stood up from his position sitting on the ground and continued on, but not before he was interrupted with the orange and black text box in his face. Familiars familiars are animals that can fight by your side and also level up just like you. They can be a great partner in battle and can help out in situations that don't require fighting. The female kid is descended from a breed of foxes known for their ability to manipulate chakra and their fighting ability in battle. Take that female kid to the Inuzuka's first chance that you get to make sure that she is okay. Quest alert. Take that female fox kid to the Inuzuka's to get a checkup. Rewards, Fox Familiar, 500x to both you and your new familiar. Naruto sighed this was a responsibility that he didn't really need on his hands, but he didn't want to just leave the small kid in the Inuzuka kennels. He'd take the kid to the Inuzuka and ask for them to give the small fox a checkup in the morning. He could forsake his Raymond for that, he wasn't going to be a cold-hearted bastard. Naruto continued on with the floor, remaking the crystal claws to match his feet again, now that the kit was secured on his back. The only sound for the next few minutes was the soft clicking of his claws on the stone floor, Naruto had noticed that the whispers had stopped the deeper into the third floor he'd gone. He sighed, Naruto didn't know what was more unnerving, the whispers or the complete silence, with the exception of the soft clicks of his claws on the cold stone floor. How did Naruto know it was cold? Because it obviously wasn't warm in the cave because he was shivering. And he knew that he wasn't scared enough to be shivering from fright. Naruto also noticed that all the enemies had seemed to have vacated the third floor, he hoped that they didn't come back on the fourth floor just to screw him over. The spiders were annoying, and even though he was overleveled, they still took some time to kill. Naruto quickened his pace, he wanted to defeat the boss and get out of the dungeon, he'd been in here for who know how long. Eventually Naruto came down a cave that got smaller as it went, and Naruto was forced to crouch and eventually crawl on his hands and knees in order to get through the cave. Good thing he wasn't claustrophobic, and the only thing he had to fear was ghosts, those accursed things that just wouldn't stay dead. But it got him thinking, if he died and became a ghost, would he be afraid of himself? He would have to see, after he became Hokage and all that jazz. Naruto dragged himself from his thoughts and noticed a light at the end of the tunnel. Literally, he'd just been crawling in the dark, and when he came to the end of the tunnel, he'd noticed that he'd been in the dark all along. Well light was nice, and so Naruto grabbed a torch that was sitting in a ball of spider's web and held it in his crystal claw. Luckily, the crystal didn't transmit heat all that well, so he wouldn't burn himself on the flames that slowly crept down the torch. Naruto quickened his pace again, and then quickly stopped when he came to the opening of the cave into a giant cavern that had a crevice running though it. Through the silence and the silent clicks of the flame popping every now and again, Naruto could hear a silent river running through the bottom of the crevice. He'd rather not fall down now, because not only would he break his bones on the crash at the bottom, but he'd then have to drag his broken body out of the river and up the crevice. Naruto looked around, his vision was increased with the torch lighting up his path, but the darkness seemed to eat the light, as much as it could making a sort of opaque barrier that the light could not penetrate. Naruto growled in frustration, he couldn't see the end of the cavern, and so he began walking along the wall, avoiding the crevice in the middle of the cavern. This was frustrating, Naruto just wanted to fight the boss and get out of there. Naruto then spotted a dull shine near where he was, over the chasm. Naruto just couldn't get a break now could he? Naruto sighed and then took a few steps back, before getting a running start and leaping over the chasm as far as he could. But it wasn't quite enough, and Naruto didn't quite make it, before crashing into the edge of the crevice and sliding down the smooth rock face. The torch dropped from Naruto's hand and fell all the way down the chasm before dropping into the river below. But it didn't extinguish, and instead it ignited the entire river into flames. Naruto however was stuck on the rock face, his clawed hands and feet digging into the smooth rock. Naruto looked down, it wasn't running water down there, it was running oil. And then he noticed there was a long alcove running near the bottom of the crevice, and he noticed a barrel almost leaning into the river. He could barely read it, but he made out a few words. Warning, explosive. 
Naruto's eyes widened as he started up the rock face as fast as he could, using the crystal claws on his hands and feet, as well as using his tree walking abilities to gain speed. Just as Naruto was about to climb over the edge, the entire chasm exploded and launched Naruto over the edge and into the wall. He landed back onto his face, the fox on his back was squealing in terror, and then calmed down as it realized that it was safe in the crystal. Naruto got up and walked into the cave leading out of the cavern. His health was regenerating from getting knocked down to half health from the explosion. He winced as some of the burns were healed, but other than that Naruto pretty much returned quickly to full health. Who the hell makes a river of oil and then puts high explosives next to it? Something was going to die today preferably a giant spider and oh how Naruto was going to get his wish. Naruto followed the cave, which appeared to be spiraling down into the depths of the earth, and the further down that Naruto got, the more webs seemed to cover the once clean rock face. The spiraling cave then came to a stop and leveled out, before opening up again into a bigger cavern than the last one. This one seemed to be the size of Konoha's arena. The moment Naruto stepped into the boss room, torches lit themselves around the edges, and four glowing lights light up in the center and flew to the ceiling of the arena, which was almost 100 meters up. The ceiling and walls were decorated with cocoon that Naruto could only guess contained dead bodies and animals that were victims of the spiders. Four pillars surrounded the exact center of the arena, all placed in such a way that two of them framed the path for Naruto to reach the center. The other two stood symmetrical on the other side of the small circle in the center of the arena. Naruto looked at the black sphere floating in the center of the, when he got close enough it flew up towards the ceiling, and he followed it with his eyes. The black sphere floated up to a giant black spider that he didn't notice before. The sphere floated into a socket on the spider's midsection and it blinked. The sphere blinked a couple times before it turned white and it rolled in the socket until a red iris and black pupil were staring back at Naruto. The giant spider itself was black in color, a shiny black as if it was covered in metallic armor. There was a large red herglis on the backside of the spider and Naruto found himself staring at that for a moment too long before the spider somehow shrieked and jumped down from the ceiling. When it landed, it reared up on its last four legs and showed off three foot long fangs dripping with acidic venom and then it shrieked again, shaking the entire chamber. Queen of Spiders Black Widow Level 10, Health 2000, Naruto's jaw dropped, it was his level. But the average enemy level was 3 to 6. Oh, average, being the key word and a boss wasn't average at all. So that was a good thing to know, bosses would be higher level than all of the enemies on the floor. Naruto jumped in and swung at the boss's legs, hoping to take out its mobility right off the bat, so he could wail on it for the rest of the fight. No such luck, Naruto only found himself about to be skewered by on the end of the widow's legs. When Naruto jumped back the widow launched a web at the ceiling and reeled itself up, much to Naruto's disdain. Naruto growled as it sat up there, staring at him with that giant pulsating eye. The giant eye was a dead giveaway for the weak spot on the boss, and so Naruto ran up to one of the pillars and began running up it. When Naruto had reached the ceiling, he began fighting the damn thing upside down. The first thing he did was get underneath it to its smooth underbelly. Naruto then launched himself off of the ceiling and into the bottom of the spider. Both of them were launched from the ceiling towards the ground and get the spider managed to use its webs to grapple away from the ground at the last second. Naruto turned in mid-air and landed on his feet, his health only going down a small bit, seeing as his crystals protected his fall a little bit. Naruto stared at the spider which was in between two of the pillars and began running up onto the opposite pillars, determination burning in his eyes. As Naruto was running up the pillar, he began doing hand signs for one of his techniques, and when he was adequately high enough, Naruto did a flip off of the pillar and over to the spider before activating his technique. Crystal release. Giant crystal hammer. Naruto held his fists together above his head, and the size of the crystal claws grew in size, until they were half the size of the widow. Then Naruto smirked as he slammed the hammer into the spider's backside, knocking it to the ground. L1500-2000, yeah. He just needed more attacks like that and he could end this battle really quickly. The spider watched Naruto as he landed and then coughed up globs of acid which it launched at Naruto. Naruto not wanted to end up sludge dodged the globs of acid as they melted the stone floor. Naruto had taken his eyes off the spider long enough for it to have spawned a sack of spiders, which burst open and spawned several baby spiders health minus 100. Okay that wasn't fun, Naruto was rushed by 10 baby spiders and the queen herself. Naruto was then forced to try to kill the babies, while trying not to get impaled himself by the queen's long's legs. When he dodged one of the legs, he grabbed it and like the king, he chucked the queen at the wall. Stepping on the rest of the babies Naruto launched himself at the queen before tearing into her back and mainly the eye. It was disgusting, but the queen's health quickly dropped to 500 and then Naruto was knocked back by a blast of strong wind. He tumbled across the room before managing to come to a stop. The widow had turned from black to red and above her health bar, where the words enraged, Naruto knew that he was in serious shit. 
the Spider Queen was even faster now and used it to her advantage, trying to impale Naruto with all eight legs, and Naruto could do nothing but dodge. Rolling out from under her Naruto attempted to run up the pillar only for the queen to attach a line of silk to him and then pulling him back down the ground. Naruto watched as his health dropped almost 200 points. The queen again attempted to impale him with one of her legs and he managed to grab the offending appendage at the last second, holding it a few inches from his chest, both of them struggling, Naruto to keep it away and the queen trying to sink it into his heart. With a roar of effort, Naruto forced the spider queen away and she rushed in again trying to bite him this time. Naruto decided that this was enough, and when the queen got in range he backhanded the fangs away from him and the grabbed on of the legs before severing it from the main body. He the proceeded to jump above the spider who just lost a limb and shoved the end of the limb into the giant eye, impaling the spider. The leg broke through the entire body and impaled the spider to the ground. Naruto dusted himself off as he watched the spider queen explode into bright and multicolored pixels. Naruto jumped in the air, that's why you don't mess with the next Hokage. Naruto walked over to the shining pile of loot and grabbed what was rightfully his. 100,000, Ryo, one spider's den key, one black widow trophy. Grabbing it all Naruto ran over to the new entrance and went through it, coming out into another brightly lit room with a golden chest in the middle. Naruto kneeled down on the floor and he inserted the key into the chest lock and watched as it popped open. What was inside was truly wonderful. Rage modifier, spider's dagger, 5x acid bile, 200,000, Ryo, speed modifier, scroll of ninja wire techniques, scroll of spider thread techniques, 5x steel wire spool, 10x spider silk spool, truly wonderful, Naruto would look over all of them as he got back to the apartment, he turned to the back of the room and walked into the small alcove. He looked up only to see iron rungs leading to the top of the shaft he was looking at. The top was darkness and the soft glow of the moon, which meant that it was night time. Damn he spent a long time in the caves. Naruto began to scale the iron rungs as fast as he could in order to get to the top of the shaft. When he was up the hole sealed up behind him, making it seem as if he appeared out of thin air. Naruto took a deep breath and enjoyed the fresh air of the above ground. But something was amiss, everything was quiet, no cricket or owl were making sounds tonight. And that allowed Naruto to hear distant heavy breathing heading his way. Naruto crouched down and hid next to a tree, hoping that he could blend in with the scenery as somebody headed his way. The man holding a sack, which was moving ran towards Naruto, but didn't seem to notice him. The man was wearing a Kumo forehead protector, and Naruto narrowed his eyes, why was he here at Konoha? The man stopped to catch his breath and he chuckled a bit, when I get back to Kumo, we will finally have the Byakugan like Lord Forth wanted. You little runt you hear that. When we get back to Kumo, you get to give us an entire army of Byakugan users. The person in the sack started trying to get out of the sack, and muffled sounds of shrieks and cries were all Naruto heard. Naruto hated rapists, kidnappers, and well he didn't like a lot of different type of people, and this man fell into a lot of those categories, so it was time to step in. Naruto dashed from his spot next to the tree and curled his fist up, which was still enveloped in the crystal, and he threw a punch at the unsuspecting Kumo Ninja. Naruto aimed for the spot where the sun don't shine, and the Kumo Nin fell over and didn't get back up again. Naruto let the crystal over his arms and legs fade, as well as the crystal hump on his back, and made sure the fox was still there before he grabbed a kunai and cut open the sack. Naruto then helped whoever it was out of the sack and cut the ropes holding them. The Hyuga the Kumo Nin had kidnapped was sobbing, and it sounded like a girl. Naruto then recognized who it was by the dim light of the moon. He used that light to peel off the tape off her mouth as she sobbed. Hinata. Everything's alright now, it's going to be fine. The man's not going to hurt you anymore, he's knocked out. I'm here Hinata so calm down. Naruto wrapped his arms around Hinata and held her close. He tried to comfort the shy girl as she sobbed into his shoulder. I I, I was so scared D Naruto. I thought I'd never see Konoha again. Hinata buried her face into Naruto's shoulder. SHHHHH, just be quiet and calm down for now. Naruto continued to hug Hinata, patting her on the back and just in general comforting her. It was several minutes until an Anbu arrived at the scene with a lantern at his side. The Anbu simply looked at the scene before radioing in, tell the Hyugas we've got the man who kidnapped their daughter, and she's alright. We are by training ground one. No I don't need backup, she's fine. The Anbu approached the two children who were next to the knocked out man. The Anbu slung the Kumonin over his shoulder, I need you two to follow me to the Hokage Tower. Naruto looked back at the Anbu and nodded before follow the Anbu who walked at a relatively slow pace for the two children. Naruto managed to coax Hinata into walking on her own, but she wouldn't leave his side, and he kept one arm around her just to comfort her. It took 20 minutes to get from the training ground to the Hokage Tower, and they just went into the building. The lights were on, but most of the staffing were asleep, and so it was eerily quiet. The Anbu knocked on the door and there was a gruff, enter. From Siratobi. 
Naruto followed the Anbu into to the office, and they all stood in front of the Hokage who was still wearing his pajamas. Anbu report. Saratobi wanted to get this over with as soon as possible. I found the man unconscious at training ground one with the boy coming down the Hyuga Eris there. I assume that the boy knocked the man out. Naruto please tell me what happened. Naruto cleared his voice and patted Hinata's back, I was training for most of the day, and I guess I fell asleep, and when I woke up a few minutes later when I was about to leave, I found a man carrying Hinata here in a sack, and so I hit him where the sun don't shine. Hit him hard enough to knock him out I guess. Naruto smiled and went back to keeping Hinata from crying again. It was at that moment that Hiashi burst into the office and looked at the scene before he rushed to his daughter's side. Hinata reluctantly left Naruto's side only to be hugged by her father. I thought I was going to lose you. Hiashi spoke more softly than Hinata had ever hear him speak, and she quickly returned the hug. Hiashi looked over to Naruto, I assume that you were the one to rescue my daughter. Tsuritobi smiled, yes Naruto here is the one who saved your daughter. You have my eternal thanks, I don't know what I would have done if I lost her. Hiashi then looked over to the man who was still slung over the Anbu's shoulder. Give the man to me, I'll kill him. Hiashi growled before Tsuritobi cut him off. I think that you'll find that he'll never have children again much better than killing the man. And if you did kill him then it could cause war between us and Kumo, and that's the last thing that I want. Naruto thought for a bit, is it true that the Yamanakas can go through memories and actually replace memories or get rid of them? Yes, where are you going with this Naruto? Saratobi asked his head tilting a bit. Well I was thinking that we could simply rewrite the Kumo Nin's memories and just be done with it all. Make it so he doesn't remember anything, and he just came here to do what he came to do. It'll avoid any conflict with Kumo. Naruto suggested, before shrugging his shoulders. I'll take that into consideration Naruto, can I assume that it okay with you Hiashi? If it makes you feel any better, he'll never have kids again. Naruto said with a smile. Hiashi smirked once before returning his look to the Hokage, yes that is fine with me, but I want double guards on everybody in the Hyuga clan, whenever anybody from Kumo shows up. Hiashi took his daughter and they both excused themselves from the office. Tsuritobi sighed, I can't thank you enough Naruto, you've probably saved us from what could have ended in war. Tomorrow I'll take you for all you can eat Raymond at noon, Ichirakus. Naruto jumped in the air, thanking his grandfather figure over and over before running out the door, shouting about Raymond over and over again. I'm getting too old to be getting up in midnight. Saratobi sighed, he really was getting too old for the job. He'd need to pick a successor soon, somebody who could actually protect the village unlike him. He could barely do anything in his old age anymore. So it was about that time then, time to retire for real. Naruto was excited, although a little bummed out, but he was still excited. It had been nearly six months since the Hyuga kidnapping fiasco, and Suratobi had offered to take Naruto to Kumo with him, so they could discuss the treaty a bit more in depth personally. The reason that Naruto was bummed was that Suratobi had told Naruto that he had to dye his hair brown, he had to wear grey contacts, and he had to cover up his whisker marks. He was forced to basically abandon everything that he liked back home, all because of the lame excuse that, Kumo knew your parents and didn't like them, so I want you to change your looks, just in case that anybody might remember your parents and make the connection, it's for your protection if you want to go. So he Naruto was, wearing black shorts instead of brown and wearing a navy blue hoodie, instead of his normal black and burnt orange one. Underneath he had a light blue shirt instead of a orange shirt. Naruto however was allowed to keep his sandals seeing as everybody and their grandmother wore them. So here was Naruto traveling next to Suratobi, using his mind to use his menu. To anybody else looking, the boy was spacing out or just found something interesting to look at, but to his own eyes, he was currently reviewing his own skills. Naruto Uzumaki level 15, 0, 0, 0, 2000, X, points to spend 0, trainee, strength 40, agility 40, endurance 60, vitality 60, intelligence 24, tacra 7500, control 75. Naruto was proud of his stats, they were much higher than anybody's his age, and although that wasn't saying much seeing as there were more people older than him than there were his age. Although he was much better than most genin who were a few years ahead of him, although he wasn't better than him by much. Skills, mind of the gamer LV. Gives the gamer the ability to think clearly and uninhibited in the heat of battle or anywhere really, this skill negates negative debuffs, such as confusion and insanity. The mind can handle more strain and process information faster than others. Eye of the Gamer LV. The gamer has a good eye, and with that good eye the gamer can see the name, stats, and level of any shinobi. The gamer can also spot things easier and has a perfect memory, as well as a slower sense of time than everybody else. Body of the Gamer LV. The body of the gamer allows the gamer to continue on and start using chakra and health in the stead that they run out of stamina and use stamina and health in the turn that they lose all of their chakra. The chakra and stamina of the gamer replenish faster and one night of rest can fully heal any wounds. 
those three abilities were the abilities the Naruto had dubbed the gamer's trio, because they all had something to do with him, the gamer, and he hadn't needed to learn them, they just came naturally to him. They were all super useful, and Naruto used them on a daily basis, even if sometimes he didn't realize it. But then Naruto looked at his non-combat skills, well they weren't the greatest in the world Naruto had quite a few. Hooking, sealing, drawing, gardening, chemistry, sewing, carpentry, stealth, pickpocketing, survival skills, explosive making. That was just the tip of the iceberg on what the game could do, but Naruto hadn't had the time to delve into all of that or even get the proper level to go into all that. He had found out that it was possible to get space-time ninjutsu, and he was excited to implement that into his already impressive arsenal. Looking over the skills that he'd picked up from the spider boss he'd killed six months back, he remembered getting pumped up for the skills that he'd read. They sounded cool and could do a lot in the heat of battle, including but not limited to holding the enemy in place, launching himself across the battlefield faster than he could jump, setting invisible traps almost instantly, and the works. Wire Techniques Razor Web Level 4 Using both hands, the user whips the wires around the battlefield, latching onto everything from trees to rocks, and using them to create a web of razor wire that can cut the player just as much as the enemy. Wire Techniques Wired Launch Level 5 Using one or both hands, the user latches onto something within the range of the wires and either pulls it to the user or the user towards it. Depending on the strength stat, the speed of the launch will increase or decrease. Wire Technique Spiders Walk Level 5 allows for the user of the technique to walk on the razor wire without getting hurt. This allows for the users to create webs of razor wire that the user can navigate in safely. Wire Technique Steel Whip Level 4 hurls several strands of razor wire together to make a thicker and more durable strand, and although it isn't the fastest technique in the world, it does a decent amount of damage and can even cause cripple. Naruto was proud of those techniques because if he tried, he could cut a tree in half with a razor wire, and he could do it from almost 100 meters. Truly the wire techniques were deadly and versatile. And although Naruto was nowhere near a master at the techniques, he was good enough to use the techniques in battle without hindering himself. Naruto let his eyes wander from the skill screen long enough to look at Siratobi who merely smiled back. It was nice getting to spend some time with his grandfather figure, even if he really wasn't paying attention. Turning his attention back to his screen Naruto looked again at his other skills, all of them were nice, but Naruto had kind of left them off for the last six months when he was training, preferring to train his new skills, mainly his new bloodline which was Ice Release. His Ice Release was mainly defensive, yet Naruto had thought ahead and had developed some offensive moves for the Ice Bloodline. Nothing really special just some Ice Spikes and a trapping move. But Naruto had found that he could make special ice mirrors that he could step into and travel from mirror to mirror at a speed that was higher than what Naruto could move on foot. Although the chakra cost was a little high for Naruto's liking, and so he declared to himself that it wasn't battle ready unless he was truly desperate. There wasn't much change other than the fact that he'd reached level 15 and he'd gotten an achievement for it, and the best part of the achievement 15 before the academy was that all of the stat points he'd been carrying on him at that point was doubled from 25 to 50, and he'd leveled out some of his skills by increasing his control to 75, where Naruto deemed it an acceptable level for the academy and then increased his strength, agility, and finished the rest of the points off on intelligence. So Naruto was pretty happy with his stats, and he'd found a pretty handy skill that he found was absolutely cheap in battle. Pause feature. When the gamer pauses the game, all time stops and only the gamer can move. Although the gamer cannot interact with the environment while he is paused. Naruto figured that by just using the pause feature he could warp around the arena and around attacks, simply by thinking pause. It was so cheap, and Naruto figured that he would keep that little ability secret as long as he could, which he figured would be about the time he entered the Chunin exams or when he got into a life and death situation. Or just use it in dungeons, seeing as he didn't care about fighting monsters fairly or with even the tiniest bit of honor. Naruto you've been strangely quiet, Arayo for your thoughts. Saratobi asked Naruto who turned his head and mentally shut down his menu. I'm trying to remember if I brought those extra packs of instant ramen or not. I don't remember if I brought 40 or 50. Naruto replied, shaking his head. Tsuritobi shook his head smiling, Naruto never changed. Naruto however since using that excuse had gotten off track with his thoughts. Now he really was wondering if he'd brought those extra packs of ramen. Naruto pulled out a little book with a plain brown book, this was his checklist. He had a different checklist for different scenarios. Going to Kumo was not one of the scenarios and was a sort of spur of the moment thing. Literally the old man had come to his apartment and asked if he and Kakashi wanted to join him in the trip to Kumo. Naruto accepted using the excuse that he'd always wanted to see different villages, although it really wasn't an excuse because it was true. Going to different villages was a good learning experience, seeing how different villages ran things and new places. Naruto was going to take every chance that he could get to learn new things. 
Naruto look ahead, tell me what do you think that is? Saratobi once again snapped Naruto from his wandering mind again, and Naruto looked head on the path. Around him was the typical rocky path that was the center of lightning country. But in front of him, Naruto could barely see the front gates to Kumo, or just village hidden in the clouds. Everything was built on rocky spires, and there were bridges leading to and from different rocky spires. Many of the buildings were either built in the spires, or on top of them, and the tops of the spires had been cleared out to make was for large circular fields. When both him and Saratobi and, and the Anbu that were their escort reached the front gates, the Chunin that was on duty, greeted them and let them into the city, nobody batting an eye. Naruto looked around at everything in amazement, it was all so brand new for him. Unlike Kanoha where everything was built from stone or wood, most of Kumo was built from stone and glass. In a ninja village, things were made from glass. That meant that the Rakage trusted his ninja not to break anything, or the punishment for breaking things was that it came out of your wallet, and many of the ninja learned to use the flat training fields that sat at the top of the biggest spires as to create more room. Saratobi looked down at Naruto and smiled before reaching down and rubbing the top of Naruto's head. I'm going to meet with the Rakage, so you have two choices, either stay with me and be on your best behavior when we meet with the Rakage, or you can wander Kumo, as long as you have two Anbu with you at all times. Naruto didn't give it a second thought, I'm going to wander until you get back. If you get lost remember that we are staying at the hotel right next to the Rakage Tower. The Rakage Tower is in the middle of the village, and you cannot miss it Naruto, be safe and be respectful. You might be a guest, but this is not your village, so respect others. Saratobi smiled before turning and walking toward the Hokage Tower where he would be meeting with the Rakage. Naruto however turned and began walking through the buildings and along the bridges of Kumo, enjoying the scenery of Kumo. Sure Kanoha had its massive forests that were pretty, but it got old fast, and nothing was really cool after a while. But all of this was completely new, and Naruto wanted to see as much of it as possible. Yes he was aware of the two Anbu who were trailing him, they were his protection. And he was aware of the Kumo Anbu who were also trailing him, they were watching him for the rakage to make sure that he didn't cause any damage. Naruto wandered around for a couple hours, he bought some candy from a vendor, and then went on his merry way. It wasn't until now that Naruto had found himself at the edge of one of the training grounds to Kumo that he saw the message. Welcome to Skyline Archipelago. Average enemy level. Rewards. Naruto literally stared off into space for a while, just looking at that message. He didn't know where the dungeons outside of Kanoha were, so running into one here was really good right? Naruto hoped so because as soon as the Anbu weren't looking he threw all caution to the wind, Naruto thought enter and he disappeared from the world as if he was never there. Entering the dungeon was strange because normally everything didn't go black, and he didn't have the strangest feeling of falling when he normally entered. Except when the light came, he found that he was falling. Clouds passed him by and Naruto found himself heading for islands, except these ones were floating in the sky. Naruto began flailing his arms and legs, as if that would slow him down, but when he was about to hit the ground Naruto slowed in mid-air, and he landed on the ground just fine. Clouds were rolling by, a soft breeze was also going by, the air was warm. Everything was just lovely, enough to make Naruto tempted to lay down in the grass and forget that he was actually in a dungeon. Welcome to stage 1 planes. This place is nice oh my god what is that thing? Naruto shouted as he looked at the giant bird in the sky that flew above him. It was a giant bird with pitch black feathers and a long curved beak. The eyes were blood red and the claws were knotted and twisted, but the talons remained razor sharp. The bird opened up its beak to reveal rows upon rows of razor sharp teeth. Hell bird level. Health. Dungeon effect. Due to the special dungeon, you will not get an enemy's heath or their level. Although due to the dungeon effect, all time stops outside of the dungeon. The pause feature and tree walking also cannot be used in this dungeon. Naruto stared at the birds and flicked his wrists, allowing a few lines of razor wire to come falling to the ground. Naruto kept his eyes locked onto the bird before he whipped his arm in the direction of the bird and manipulated the wires with his chakra. The razor wires quickly wrapped around the hell bird's wings and then Naruto pulled. The bird went down without problems, after its wing fell off Naruto walked over to where it shattered into pixels and picked up the loot. Demonic plumage material, the black and evil feather that came from a defeated hellbird. Used in crafting and making armor, when crafted into armor, weapons, or clothes, the demonic plumage adds 1% life steal for every demonic plumage added. Demonic plumage are a special item and can only be farmed in Skyline Archipelago in the Kumo training grounds. So farm up while you can. Naruto smiled, life steal sounded like it was really good, and after reading the description, he could only want to start farming the damned birds from hell even more. Life steal effects. When life steal is applied to armor or weapons, every hit onto an enemy will sap a percentage of health from the enemy. The higher the percentage the more health drained from an opponent, the amount actually taken is the percentage of the amount of damage that you do. 
striking an opponent after your health is full will give you overheal, which will add onto your health up to 10 times as much as the normal health. This overheal does not go away until you are struck by an opponent or do something stupid to lose health. Life steal sounded so useful. Naruto couldn't help but wanted. It was like sending a fat kid into the candy store telling him he had unlimited funds and the shop just got a fresh shipment of new candy in. Except Naruto wasn't fat and it was the game telling him that these plumages could make it so that unless somebody one-shot him or they were fast enough that he couldn't get a hit off, then he was going to be basically immortal. Naruto eagerly looked around for more birds but was disappointed when he could find any of them, so Naruto waded through the long grass of the island that he was on. The dungeon effect although slightly annoying was nothing that Naruto could not handle, he could simply climb with the wires and his crystal claws, and he was a bit disappointed when he saw that he wasn't allowed to use the pause feature. Naruto quickly reached the edge of the island, only to see that there were several more islands nearby that were almost in jumping distance. So Naruto used his wires and launched himself over to the other island. This was much like the last island, with the tall grass, but it was a bit more hilly and had a few trees on it. Naruto took a few steps into the island and immediately was attacked by the birds of hell. Naruto decided that since he was getting swarmed by the birds, he activated one of his best defenses. Ice release. Dense ice armor. Naruto was then enveloped by a thin layer of ice, which was causing a slow fog to roll off of him. Although the ice surrounding him was thin, it was incredibly dense enough to match steel in strength. But it left the joints untouched so as to leave Naruto with enough mobility to actually move around. And that was where Naruto's crystal defense came in, although not as defensive as the ice, the crystal allowed Naruto to move his joints in, and he used dense crystal to protect his joints and leave him with a mask of clear crystal that he could breath out of but would protect his face. Naruto released his razor wires, which were sent straight at the birds who somehow dodged them, but the wires gave chase to the birds, and eventually all of the birds were defeated. Naruto picked up several more of the demonic plumages, and he went his merry way happy to have gained almost seven of them. He was going to get home after the trip, which would last about three days in Kumo, and a week of travel back to Konoha, and after he got back he was going to make himself some fancy armor that had a ton of life steal. But Naruto wasn't going to get ahead of himself just yet, he still had to defeat the enemies in the dungeon and then the mini-boss and the boss itself. And considering the birds, he knew it was either going to be a bigger birds or it was just going to be something that flew. Most likely something that flew seeing as Naruto couldn't help but notice that there were flying snakes coming at him. Flying snake LV. Health. Naruto sighed, why couldn't life make things easier for him? Oh well, if it did that then nothing would actually be fun for him, and so Naruto again whipped the wires in the directions of the snakes, who expertly dodged them and kept coming at Naruto full speed. Naruto's wires gave chase, but the snakes managed to evade his wires. Deciding to use his head for once, Naruto figured that the wires would not work on the snakes, and so when the first snake came into range his hand shot out and grabbed the head of the snake, crushing it and killing the snake. Naruto dodged the rest of the snakes that swooped down to try and bite him, before launching his wires at them. The snakes who tried to turn around in midair couldn't and were shredded by the wires. Every second Naruto was only thanking himself for picking up the skills to use the wires, versatile and deadly, a combination that Naruto loved. Naruto picked up the drop from the snakes and read the item description. Celestial snake skin. The special height of a flying snake, this celestial skin can only be found in the skyline archipelago in the Kumo training grounds. Can be applied to weapons, armor, or clothes in the making process. Using one celestial snakeskin will give an item 1% extra speed bonus. Naruto smiled, but then quickly frowned this meant more farming. And then his mind wandered back to the dungeon effect. Naruto again smiled, he was ready to run himself into the ground with farming. God he was going to leave with all the ingredients that he possibly could. So Naruto, not finding anything on the island continued his search. He liked this dungeon, the whole atmosphere was a whole lot better than the first dungeon which was just so bleak. But this one was bright and vibrant and just full of life, and Naruto enjoyed it. Naruto immediately ran towards the edge of the island and jumped off the edge before using his wires to grapple to another island. Naruto was enjoying himself, he didn't really have any responsibilities here and he could mess about, killing enemies as he pleased. Naruto laughed a bit before he let the ice armor dissipate and he spun in place a couple times before landing on the ground and on the soft grass. He just stared at the sky for a bit, it seemed like hours, but in reality it was just a few minutes. Naruto smiled before getting back up and he sat cross-legged on the grass while trying something. He'd seen some of the other ninjas wielding swords like katanas or ninjados and Naruto wanted to learn how to use a sword, but he couldn't find anybody who would teach him, so Naruto instead had been working on his own style. He didn't know what to call it yet, but he was going to find something within his lifetime to call it. Holding out his hands, Naruto focused his dual bloodlines and made dual swords. 
in one hand, a slightly pick slightly translucent sword, it was similar to a scimitar, yet the blunt edge was completely straight, and from the tip the blade came out into a sort of wave, before halfway down the sword it came down, and then resumed to be a wave again, but before the second wave on the sword could go completely up, the blade turned at a sharp angle to meet up with the flat edge. There was no hilt or cross guard, only a handle and the blade. If you need a visual, look up a chopper from Dark Cloud 2, kudos to you if you've played that game, and his other hand was an exact copy of his sword, but it was a foggy blue and slightly translucent in color. This was his sword creation ability. Sword Creation LV4, an ability to create different types of swords with an ice or crystal bloodline release, other bloodlines can create swords from their respective elements, but cannot really create the sharp edge of a true blade. The first blade that is created when using this skill is normally the best blade to use. Naruto smiled, it was an amazing ability because basically if Naruto got disarmed, he could just create another sword without the worry of trying to get his blade back. Getting onto his feet, Naruto spun one of his blades in his hand and continued on in the dungeon, time might not have been moving outside, but it certainly was moving on the inside of the dungeon. He didn't want to be here any longer than sunset in the dungeon. Using his wrists instead of his hands, Naruto still managed to fling himself from island to island, and after about two hours, he had yet to find anything that would identify itself as the second floor to the Skyline Archipelago. That was until Naruto found himself staring at a large doom in the distance, it was in an island that seemed to be near the center of the dungeon. Naruto immediately began moving towards the dome, in a timely fashion, yet also collecting any ingredients from monsters that he could ending up with almost 50 feathers and 30 snake skins. Naruto stood in front of the dome, the entrance was right there a giant glass door that curved right along with the dome itself. Naruto pushed on the door with his knuckles and was the surprised when he phased right through the glass. Naruto fell into the dome and then landed on the ground with a grunt. He picked himself and his swords up and dusted himself off before he looked around. Welcome to special level 2, the aviary. Naruto looked around, he wondered what kind of things that he could pick up in here. Naruto walked along the path, tall metal walls surrounded him, and it wasn't long before the stone floor turned to metal as well. He appeared to be in a maze yet Naruto didn't let that get him down, he would just stick the right and not fall down that pit. Naruto windmilled and fell backwards, but his swords were lost in the black pit. He sighed, it was almost 500 chakra to produce those swords. Yet it had been enough time that he was completely full on both energy and health. Naruto looked around and didn't see anything behind him or the sides. The only way around the pit was either jumping, which wasn't going to be an option, seeing as the pit followed the hallway and turned a corner. So Naruto looked up and a devious smile crossed his face, there were floating loops for him to latch onto with his wires. Bringing out his wires, he curled them all up with his chakra into thicker strands, before latching onto one of the loops with one of the two whips. He then tested to make sure that he was safe, and then swung to the next loop that he then latched onto with his wires, leaving him stuck between two of the loops. Naruto then flicked his wrist, and the wire attached the previous loop came off, and he swung to the next loop before rinsing and repeating, until he was able to reach solid ground around the corner. Naruto began mumbling under his breath about the stupid game and its stupid traps wanting to kill him. He continued on and stopped quite a ways away from the next trap, which happened to have colored tiles. Red, blue, yellow, green, orange, and purple tiles were on the floor. Naruto stepped up to the tiles, and then his foot sunk a little bit, causing Naruto to jump back. Yet instead of the floor falling underneath him, some of the tiles just lit up. Naruto reluctantly stepped back onto the switch, and then the tiles lit up in a certain order making short little tunes with it. Naruto only guessed that he had to follow the pattern or else something that he wouldn't enjoy was going to happen. So building chakra into his legs, Naruto jumped from tile to tile, each one lighting up as he landed on it. Naruto managed to make it all the way across in good time and continued on down the path of hell, as he now dubbed it seeing as there were traps. About 10 traps later and Naruto was getting a bit pissed, he just wanted to go back to the islands and farm monsters, instead of almost dying like this. Luckily, the path of hell ended shortly, and Naruto was able to enter a large circular room with large walls. Like the path of hell the walls and floor were made from metal, and in the wall, there were four holes in the wall that something of decent size would be able to get through. Naruto walked towards the center of the room and waited for the mini-boss to show up. He heard the flapping of wings and looked around the room and then at the holes trying to find which hole the mini-boss was going to become flying through. Then Naruto looked up and a large figure crashed through the roof and Naruto shouted, ice release. Frosted dome. Naruto hid underneath a dome of ice as a shower of metal and glass came crashing down on top of him, as well as a lizard. The lizard had wings, the lizard man had wings. And a shield and a sword, but it still had wings. Damn Naruto wanted wings, he would have to see if he could find a way to make wings that would allow him to fly with his dual bloodlines. Naruto formed his swords and the let the barrier dissipate before he looked at the flying lizard man. 
both of them brandish their swords, and then the dash towards each other intent on ending the other. Bra's level. Health. Naruto didn't know how strong this mini-boss was, so he wasn't going to be taking chances with it. He struck as fast and as hard as he could with his unorthodox fighting style, trying to catch Bra's off guard. But the lizard man wasn't having any of it and countered or parried with his sword while also blocking with his shield. Naruto could tell that Braz didn't have any particular fighting style and instead chose to hit as fast as he could in a random pattern on that Naruto couldn't figure out and he was quickly forced onto the defensive as the lizard man's strikes got stronger and quicker than his. But Naruto had advantages that he wasn't going to just forget and so he jumped back and brought his wires to the party, forcing Braz to take a few hits from wires that he didn't immediately detect. Naruto didn't let up though, he quickly tossed his swords in the air, sending them spinning a few feet above his head while he preformed a few hand signs. Crystal release. Crystal storm. Naruto shouted before hundreds of crystal shards appeared behind him ready to skewer the boss in an instant. The crystal flew and so did the mini boss. Naruto was busy aiming his crystals as Braz was busy dodging all of his crystals. But then Braz disappeared into one of the holes and Naruto let the crystals fall to the ground, no use keeping them up and wasting chakra. The flapping of Braz's wings and the howling wind outside filled Naruto's ears. Then Braz came swooping in from behind and Naruto fell to the ground. Naruto fell to the ground and cried out in pain as the shield of his opponent hit the back of his head. God getting hit by steel shield the size of his torso going at 40 miles per hour hurt like hell, he took a look at his health, not even a quarter was gone, so he was overreacting. Naruto rolled out of the way of the sword coming down on where his neck just was and then pulled out his wires, manipulating them with chakra. Braz avoided the wires that headed in his direction, and Naruto used the wires that were wrapped around his ankles to retrieve a piece of crystal that was in the shape of the spear, it wasn't his sword which was scattered somewhere in the mess of crystals. Naruto threw the spear at Braz and then focused all his concentration into his wires before picking all of his spears again and then throwing them in every direction so that they embedded themselves in the walls, the floor or some even in the remains of the ceiling. Braz held up his shield and blocked any of crystals that went his way and then attempted to take off into the air, but a sharp pain ran through its shoulders. Wire techniques. Razor web. Naruto called out, standing on one of the wires that were not wrapped around the several crystals embedded in the walls. Naruto had just limited his adversary's mobility while not hindering his own due to his ability to traverse his own wires. Naruto began taking a complex path through the razor wires toward Braz who was struggling against the wires. Naruto formed a sword in his hand, but this one was different than the rest of the, for one it was made from very dense ice. Second it was as wide as Naruto himself and almost twice as tall as he was. When Naruto got into range, he swung the sword in a giant downward slash. Braz unable to dodge due to the wire, brought up his shield. Sword met shield and Naruto's sword due to its sheer weight and size, tore the shield from Braz and then proceeded to turn it into scrap metal. Braz now up in Naruto's face let out a screech and Naruto didn't flinch but instead brought the sword in another devastating swing. Braz dropped and managed to dodge the strike before bringing his sword up to skewer Naruto, who dragged his ridiculous sword up to block. Both blades clashed, ice against steel, and although there was no screeching sound, both of the swords vibrated in both of the combatants' hands. Naruto roared in effort and took his large blade and shook off Braz and then ran across the wires away from Braz, ditching his sword along the way. Naruto stared at Braz across the room, the lizard man was currently trying to get out of the wires, and to Naruto it looked funny as hell. Seriously it looked like he was doing some sort of chicken dance trying to cut the near invisible wires. Naruto chuckled at the scene in front of him and grabbed a handful of wires, using a bit of chakra to keep them from cutting him, and he pulled as hard as he could. His chakra traveled down the wires that were around Braz, and they constricted around his form until he just up and disappeared from sight. Naruto looked around and saw Braz on the opposite side of the room, glowing in a purple haze of energy. Naruto could tell the energy was dark even from his position on the opposite side of the room. Braz then started flying at supersonic speeds towards Naruto, all the wires snapping along the way. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise before Braz's fist made contact with his face. Naruto was sent flying across the metal floor before he ran into one of his larger crystal spikes which stopped his slide. Health 600 1200 your skill physical endurance has increased by one level. Physical endurance LV. 7. Resist physical attacks. 30% of physical damage blocked or nullified. Naruto gritted his teeth, he didn't have time for that crap, and while it was welcome Naruto flicked the screen out of the way so he could focus. Naruto looked at Braz who was just floating there for the moment, wrapped in that malevolent violet black energy. Dark Braz LV. Health. Seriously? Great now Braz was evolving, what was next? Oni Braz, Magma Braz. Great Devil Braz. 
Naruto did not want enough so-called evolution, so he start performing hand signs and then slammed his hands down on the floor. Crystal release. Pentagonal prison. Crystal immediately began crystallizing the remaining wires in the floor, making its way over to Dark Bras, before the crystals reached up off the floor and formed a pentagon-shaped cage around Dark Bras. Dark Bras immediately tried beating his way out of the prison, and cracks began forming in the prison. Naruto began concentrating on a single-bladed sword, it was his regular chopper-style sword, but this time, the sharp part of the blade was bright blue, and the other part of the blade was a darker blue. The blade literally had a diamond edge, and it cut a deep mark in the floor when Naruto let his sword fall to his side. Health 600 1200 Takra 3000 7500 Stamina 2000 6000 Crystal Release. Diamond Avatar. This was one of Naruto's own original moves, it was based off his crystal and ice armor, but it increased his physical capabilities. You are under the effects of custom skill, Diamond Avatar you physical stats have been increased. Damage increased by 150%, speed increased by 100%, defense increased by 200%. Naruto smiled, it had taken him months to get this down, and he was going to build on this as a last resort skill. Ice release. Dense ice armor. Naruto finished the avatar, and it was impressive, Naruto was standing inside was looked to be a giant crystal version of himself, and he was in the middle. Naruto took a step forward, and his avatar did the exact same thing. He let all his wires sag, chakra was no longer going through them. Naruto then took off in a dead sprint to Dark Bras, who was now free and flying towards him at a fast speed. Naruto held his hand to his side, and the avatar copied him, a large sword that was a copy of the one that he held in his hand appeared. Naruto took a swing at Dark Bras, who barely managed to dodge, then rammed into the chest of the avatar, and both came into a pushing contest, until Dark Bras managed to push Naruto over, and then flew to the ceiling, and then flew back down into Naruto's chest. The avatar held, but Naruto was sweating with the effort of keeping it together, the avatar used a lot of chakra, and on second, though using was probably not a good idea, but it was too late for backing out now. Naruto grabbed Bras off his chest who was currently punching it with his two fists, the sword and shield abandoned. Naruto threw Bras off of him and then got up, before racing over to the lizard man who was currently recovering from slamming into the wall. Naruto grabbed Brax again and began slamming him into the wall over and over again. Braz struggled, but with his wings and arms bound he was almost powerless, and by the time Naruto stopped pummeling him, the mini-boss could barely move. Leaving Naruto to toss him up in the air and completely separate his right and left halves with his giant sword. Achievement Get Destroyer of Dark, defeat a boss enemy who was under the influence of Dark Chakra. Reward 5000x plus 10% damage to enemies under the influence of Dark Chakra. Achievement Get for the Underdog, defeat an enemy 10 levels or more higher than you. Reward 2000x, 5 stat points, Dark Chakra. Dark Chakra is a feature only available in special dungeons, and usually only enemies level 25 or higher can use it. When enemies use this ability, they gain a temporary boost in all fields, and their energy is restored, but their health slowly deteriorates when using Dark Chakra. Oh god they gave the enemies more abilities to play with. No fair, Naruto was the gamer, so he was the only one who should awesome abilities. Naruto walked out of his avatar, and all the crystals on the battlefield exploded into pixels, and the room cleaned itself. Naruto walked over to where the mini-boss had died and picked up his drops. Raya 100,000, X 5,000, Precursor Metal Ore Extremely Rare Ore, mined by the ancient people of the Sage of Six, past time this precursor ore is part of the three metal ores that can be forged into lightweight armor that is unbreakable or a weapon that is extremely powerful. The other ores are Luminite and Chronoton. Naruto picked up the large crystal, it was the size of his torso and tan in color. Naruto put it into his inventory and then took a look at the rest of the items that he got. But nothing was really as special as the ore he got. So Naruto sat down against one of the walls, he used crystal release. Crystal encampment wall to prevent any enemies from attacking him while he rested, hoping that he could restore his health and chakra. And with that, Naruto closed his eyes and let the exhaustion from the battle come. He would need to be a top health, seeing as he still had floor 3 and floor 4 to get through before he could fight the boss, which was going to be above level 25, which apparently Braz was at. He'd leveled up quite a bit, 4 times to be exact, and he would think on how to spend those points properly in order to get the best chance to beat the boss. He'd finally tackled a dungeon that was out of his league due to the fact that the boss would most likely wipe the floor with his rear end. Health 100 1200s, Takra 100 7500s, Stamina 0 6000, Dreamscape. Naruto found himself in a pitch black area and he looked around not seeing anything. Never before had he seen anything like this before. Could it be because of the fact that he'd never fallen asleep in a dungeon before? Or was it something else? Naruto shook his head and took a step forward and when he did all of the lights turned on all at once. 
he found himself looking down a hallway with pristine marble floors and large arches that towered above him. He looked around and in between the arches on the walls were clear windows showing, plaques. There were plaques, trophies, and even clones of himself seemingly frozen in time. Naruto took a look at some of the replicas. He looked at a proud replica of himself, with bright blue eyes and sun blonde hair. Reading the plaque next to the clone Naruto was surprised to find what it read. Naruto Namakas, proud son of Minato Namakas and Kashina Yuzumaki. Naruto scratched his head, he had no idea who that clone was, but this seemed like an alternate version of himself. Naruto continued down the line and looked at some of the replicas of himself. All of them had something similar in the fact that they shared his name, but they were different in several ways, some practiced ninjutsu, some jinjutsu, some were students of Saratobi, some were Sanin. Naruto rose, proud son of Summer Rose and happy sibling of Ruby Rose and Yang Xiaolong, that one didn't have a kunai on him or anything, instead he held a sword and shield combo that appeared to be made from solid light. There was another one that Naruto didn't have the parents of Minato Namakas and Kashina Yuzumaki. Naruto Phoenix, proud heir to the Phoenix family. Reaching the end of the hallway, Naruto came to a large room which like the rest of this place was completely covered in pristine marble. But at the end of the great room, Naruto found himself looking at a cage, and off to his left, there was a large terminal. Naruto made his way to the terminal and sat at the seat that was right in front of it. He looked at the screen and wondered why it was blank. That was before it suddenly turned on startling Naruto. Looking at the screen, Naruto read over the seemingly random code that was running down the screen, before it turned white and black words loaded onto the screen. Load, save. Naruto thought load and the words faded from the screen, and instead the words game still ongoing, save progress and exit to load a new save. Naruto wondered if he actually had different data or different saves. When the two words loaded again, Naruto thought save and everything went white for a moment. Then the dream ended and Naruto woke. Dungeon scape. Naruto woke up and shook his head, what a weird dream that was, but somehow it didn't feel like a dream. Naruto got up and took a look at everything, he was good to go, and then he began to think about what he wanted to put his stat points into. Control seemed like a good idea, but Naruto decided that having a bit of speed to help him dodge attack would work well with his heavy defense. He would have to work on his offensive a little more, he had the battle survivability for sure, but he was lacking on attack power in his opinion. Naruto let down his crystal barrier and walked out of the mini boss room and into floor 3. Naruto had split up the points between strength and agility, bringing them both to 50. Welcome to Special Floor 3, Ancient Gardens. Naruto took a look at what he was dealing with, and it really wasn't much. Seriously, the two dungeons he entered had seriously dropped in quality when he beat the mini-boss. He found himself looking at ancient crumbling walls, scraps of metal fallen where their most likely beautiful flora used to grow. The area that he'd stepped out into was a circular area that seemed to spiral up and around the mini-boss room. So Naruto made his way up the spiral, and he ran into flora alright, just not the kind that he was expecting. The giant pod rose from the ground on a single thick vine. Then the pod split in half, revealing several rows of razor-sharp teeth. Naruto sighed before he summoned his chopper in his hand and charged the giant plant. Ravenous Flora LV. Health. Naruto slid underneath the first bite and headed straight for the stem, before severing it in one clean strike. The plant was severed from its stem, but it didn't die, and instead started bounding towards Naruto from behind, trying to bite him. Naruto turned around and formed a spear of ice in his hand, before shoving it through the head of the offending flora. It stopped moving before shattering into several pixels of light, and Naruto grabbed the loot off of it. Ravenous Vine. When Ravenous Vine is added to armor or clothing, the strong fibers in the vine increase the durability and defensive power of the clothing. This material cannot be added to weapons. 1% increase to both durability and defense for every material added to one article of clothing or armor. Naruto simply put it in his inventory and kept going, he was going to get excited over that, because the feathers and the scales did a lot more for him than the vines did. So Naruto traveled up the spiral, fighting more of the demon bird, flying snakes, and ravenous flora along the way. The entirety of the third floor was nothing really special just a bunch of enemies. But it was the fourth floor that things started to get interesting. Welcome to special floor 4, Stormy Sky Tower. Naruto looked up the tower, he was supposed to climb up the vines with the wind and the now the rain battering him. Crystal release. Crystalline claws. Naruto's hands were covered in the crystal, and soon he was digging into the metal of the tower, the vine supporting the claws on his feet. Naruto had wrapped the wires around his waist and was using his chakra to manipulate them to act as a sort of net to press him up against the wall when the wind started blowing. Naruto grit his teeth and continued upward, his clothes completely soaked by the rain, and his teeth were chattering from the howling wind. Lightning whipped across the sky, lighting it up for the briefest of seconds before everything turned to gray again. Naruto slammed his claw into the metal of the tower and continued his climb up the tower. Something roared up above and Naruto activated the net as he read the messages that popped up. 
Shax is awoken. From this point on time outside of the dungeon will continue on like normal. The spectators for this battle will include Kumo. You will regain the rest of your abilities at the top of the tower, with the exception of the pause feature. Wait Kumo was going to spectate his battle. Naruto was shaken from his thoughts as a dragon flew past him, breathing fire and everything. It had to be a percent dollar number and dragon. Naruto cursed with some colorful language, sorry to any kiddies watching, don't repeat that in front of your parents. Naruto then redoubled his efforts to get to the top of the tower. Grunting with effort, Naruto heaved himself over the edge and watched it the dragon landed on the middle of the battlefield. The top of the tower wasn't very big, so it was obvious that this battle was going to take place mainly in the air. Naruto looked at the four pillars that stood in the different cardinal directions. Shax, the demonic dragon LV. 45, health 20,000, Naruto's hopes fell when he saw the stats on the dragon. This was either going to be a really long fight, or this was going to be the death of him. The dragon had two extremely large bat-like wings on its back, and its entire body was covered in armor-like black scales. Two large horns twisted back from above its piercing green eyes. The dragon roared and revealed again, more razor-sharp teeth. The dragon then proceeded to take off, its wings causing powerful gusts of wind every time they flapped. Battle start. Naruto took off toward one of the pillars, as the dragon settled toward the middle of the arena just simply hovering there. Naruto used his tree climbing ability to run up one of the pillars at top speed, fireballs trailing behind him. The fireballs exploded behind him, making his ears ring, and the water around them evaporate due to the heat. Naruto ignored the ringing in his ears, his life was on the line in this battle, and he wasn't risking anything. Naruto took a giant leap off of the pillar towards the dragon and barely managed to grab the end of the tail. His claws managed to find a spot near one of the scales where he could get leverage, and he crawled up the dragon, his chakra helping him stay on, especially when the dragon took off away from the tower and started doing a real maneuvers. At the Rakage Tower, and I think that compromise is suitable for both our villages, don't you think Rakage? Saratobi smiled as he faced the Rakage of Kumagakur, eh? Yes I do think that suits both of us very well. Thank you for your time Hokage. Saratobi got up and was about to leave before a ninja burst into the office. Rakage? Somebody's fighting a dragon on top of the rear tower. The ninja near yelled. What? A dragon. I shouted before turning towards Saratobi, I apologize Hokage, there is a matter that I must attend to. I rushed out of the office, and Saratobi didn't say a word, but was quick to follow. Racing across the streets, both men were quickly drenched by the rain as they headed towards the rearmost tower, the one that overlooked the last mountain at the back of Kumagakur. When the man came up to the rearmost tower, they could see the dragon flying around like mad, as if it was trying to shake somebody off its back. Saratobi and A could both barely see the small figure running up the back of the dragon. Both men could barely make out the large slightly pink claws on the figure, and they watched at the small figure, grabbed the backwards horns of the dragon, and began steering it. The figure was forcing the dragon back toward the top of the rear tower, and the dragon roared as both of them plowed into the top of the tower, yet somehow it didn't crumble. The tower held strong. Who the hell was fighting a dragon with claws like that? Naruto managed to steer the dragon back into the ground, knocking out a portion of its health, along with a small portion of his. Shaq's health 19,520 thousandths, Naruto health 1100 1200, Naruto gritted his teeth and formed a sword out of ice, all the extra water in the air made it easier to form than dragging water out of the air to use it. When he formed his sword, he swung in down at one of the horns on the dragon. As expected the horn didn't completely sever, and instead the blade of ice sunk halfway into the horn, and then the dragon shook Naruto off, causing him to roll across the battlefield until he got up and looked the dragon in the eye. Both of them held murderous looks, both of them were ready to kill the other one. Naruto began forming the two hand seals that he needed for the move. Crystal release. Tearing crystal falling dragon. Naruto began crystallizing the water around him and forming it into a large eastern style dragon. The western-style dragon that Naruto was fighting roared and took off again, before Naruto hopped on his own dragon and flew after Shax. Ice release. Black dragon blizzard. Naruto formed the hand seals to perform the technique. Bird snake monkey horse dog. Water began congregating in the area above Naruto before it froze and formed a large black dragon that appeared to be made of snow. Naruto braced himself when he gave the mental order for both dragons to attack the one that he was fighting, and the chaos ensued. Both of his dragons aimed for the neck of Shax, and only the crystal dragon could actually get its fangs through the scales, dropping the dragon's health by a sizable amount. Naruto jumped off his dragon again and landed on Shax before rushing up to the head and grabbing his sword, which was still embedded in the horn of Shax. Naruto grabbed the handle pulled the sword out and swung again, this time cleaving the horn completely off. Naruto mentally cheered, but he knew that the boss still had over three quarters of its health, and the battle would continue on for a long time. Naruto jumped away from the dragon and then landed on one of the pillars. Crystal release. Crystal storm. 
Naruto began launching as many crystals as he dared at the dragon, aiming for the cracks in the scales. His crystal dragon and shacks were going to town on each other, biting each other's necks and being as viscous as possible. The snow dragon was making life difficult for Shaxx, seeing as its fangs couldn't pierce the thick scales of Shaxx, it had just taken to ramming into Shaxx over and over again, reforming using both Naruto's chakra and the surrounding water to keep itself in tip-top shape. Naruto had managed to get the wings with his last attack, and all of the dragons were heading towards the bottom of the arena, leaving Naruto on top of the pillar. Crystal release. Tearing crystal falling dragon. Naruto formed another crystal dragon and sent it after Shax as well, who was having a wrestling match with his other crystal dragon, while the snow dragon provided support. Naruto plopped his butt down on the pillar, he was utterly exhausted, sure he had some chakra pills, but he only wanted to take those if everything was absolutely dire. Shax health 14,000 20 thousandths, Naruto heath 800 1,000 two hundredths, if his dragons could take out Shax then he would be okay. But for now Naruto was just going to rest for a bit and see if he could regain some lost health and chakra before finishing the fight. Tsuritobi watched as not one, not two, but three dragons fought against the larger black-scaled dragon. The small eastern-style dragon that was made out of snow was not doing much anymore and so it flew up and did a kamikaze ride into the belly of the dragon. The second crystal dragon fought in its stead, ripping off scales and even damaging the tail and a wing of the dragon. The creator of both dragons was simply sitting on top of one of the pillars, as if they were resting. Saratobi figured that they were resting or waiting for their dragons to finish off the other one. But suddenly the large dragon managed to get away from the two crystal dragons and flew towards the figure, before firing off several fireballs in their direction. The figure was blown back and the claws around them evaporated before it seemed to reach into their pocket and pull out something small before popping in into their mouth. A military rations pill. Saratobi could tell that the figure was young, and so firing off several high ranks attacks would be exhausting. The figure got up and began performing even more jutsu, firing crystal lances at the dragon, and even making a large hammer smashing the dragon back into the tower, where the two crystal dragons seemed to eagerly tear into the large dragon again. This fight was interesting, nowhere near on the scale of a cage level battle, but more like jonin level. Naruto wheezed with effort and got back onto his feet, this fight was just as long as he expected and even harder. He'd taken the military rations pill and slammed the dragon back towards his other dragons who tore into Shaxx again. Shaxx health 10,000 20 thousandths, Naruto health 500 1,000 two hundredths. The battle was not turning in Naruto's favor and he needed to kill that dragon sooner rather than later. Making use of the military rations pill, Naruto formed even more hand seals and formed another large blade made of ice, this one looked more like it was for clubbing people rather than cutting, but Naruto did care. His dragons were near the stomach or anything so Naruto jumped from the top of the pillar and took a large swing in Shaxx's stomach. Direct hit and Naruto saw that he'd done over 2000 damage with that one attack. Naruto picked up the incredibly large sword again and swung once more at Shaxx, who was busy biting the neck of his first crystal dragon. Another direct hit. Naruto raised the sword up again only for Shaxx to roar in Naruto's direction, and Naruto flew back, the ice blade lost. Naruto got back onto his feet and formed another ice blade, this one small and sharper before rushing up towards the dragon. This wouldn't end with his death. He was going to get out of this and survive. Naruto curled up onto Shaxx's side and found a spot where the dragons had pierced the scales. He lifted up his sword before stabbing directly into the wound, causing more damage when he forced the ice to expand into several different spikes. Shax roared in pain as Naruto left the sword of ice stuck in its side and continued onto another wound, quickly filling that up with ice spikes. With a roar of effort, Shax managed to kill both the dragons by biting one's head off and crushing the other one. Shax flipped over and trapped Naruto underneath one of its claws. Naruto managed to form an ice dome at the last second, yet it still crushed Naruto underneath its weight. Naruto groaned in pain before he began pushing back against the claw of the dragon. Handling his chakra, Naruto formed a spike out of the dome and stabbed the dragon's claws, forcing it to lift up before Naruto rolled out from underneath it and shakily ran towards its head before forming a large spear out of crystal and facing the dragon. The dragon roared at Naruto, and the boy managed to hold his ground for a second. Naruto then let the spear fly before it embedded itself in the middle of Shaxx's forehead, and time seemed to slow down. Naruto stared at the dragon for a second before it let out a last roar, not one of defiance or of hate, but of defeat. It fell to the ground, and Naruto watched as its head thumped to the ground. Naruto walked up the head, seeing that the dragon hadn't disappeared into pixels yet. Naruto looked into the dragon's eyes, and what he found there surprised him. There was no hate in those eyes, but a look of acceptance. So this is the look of my killer, a small human child who has barely seen more than a fraction of my years. Naruto jumped back in surprise before he knelt down at the dragon's side, gently rubbing the head of the dying dragon. I don't blame you little one, know that I don't blame you for what you did.
And with those final words, the dragon known as Shax shattered into a mass of pixels. Naruto stared at where the large dragon used to be, the only things left were a trophy, a chest, and an egg the size of Naruto's torso. Naruto gently picked up the egg and held it in his hands like it was the most fragile thing in the world. Dragon egg, one of the last dragon eggs, worth entire countries. Or you could hatch it and raise the dragon and have a partner for life. Hatch time 4 years, Naruto didn't bother with the chest and for what seemed like ages, he sat there with the dragon egg in his lap, just rocking back and forth, as if trying to comfort the unborn dragon for the loss of its parent or adoptive parent, Naruto didn't know. But eventually Naruto gently put the egg in his inventory and looted the chest for the scrolls, the Ryo, and everything else that was in there before he stood up. On the other side of the tower were several figures and Naruto turned to face them. Pause, everything turned black and white, and Naruto walked up towards the figures, seeing them to be the Rakage and the Hokage. Naruto nodded dumbly to himself, of course them, and the Anbu would be here after watching him fight a dragon. Naruto instead walked past the men and headed back to the hotel room where he proceeded to get changed into dry pajamas and go to bed. It was only after he fell asleep that time resumed. Naruto jumped from tree to tree in training ground 44, also known as the Forest of Death. Ice wrapped around his entire body in an entire mobile suit of armor, his hand and feet were covered in the slightly pink crystal claws that he so loved. He was currently using his wires to get around the forest at incredible speeds that many would think would be impossible for a seven-year-old. Naruto was currently training all of his skills, after he woke up from the exhausting dungeon run at the Kumo trip Naruto had figured out that he hit a level cap of 30 that he couldn't go over until he became an academy student. His skills would hit a level cap of 100 and all experience he gained in the three years he had until the academy. So with the two tokens that he'd managed to get from the insane level up from defeating the dragon and all of the achievements he got after waking up, Naruto purchased a technique called Shadow Clone and also the Sharingan. It was just too overpowered to not have and since he could simply wear blue contacts that he'd managed to acquire Naruto could use at any time that he wanted. Currently he had all three Tomo in his Sharingan because of his year's worth of training. With a stat point that he gotten, which added up to a total of 11, he managed to get a new skill called Fuenjutsu or Just Sealing. And he was abusing the Shadow Clones to level that skill up seeing as it was so valuable. Naruto after learning the skill had quickly figured out that there were very few Sealing Masters in the world and he decided that he wanted to be one of them. It had leveled up almost 20 times in the year, but as Naruto advanced in the level he noticed that it progressed slower and slower, seeing as Naruto would have to come up with more complex seals to keep it leveling up. He could make explosive seals and sealing scrolls that could hold months worth of gear, but he couldn't make things such as chakra seals to seal others' chakra. Gravity seals were within his limit and he'd begun to wear some on his clothes so that he wouldn't have to carry the full weight of his armor and claws when he used them. Now Naruto was training with his clones, who had been instructed that they were allowed to use fatal techniques and they were allowed to go for killing blows. Naruto needed the experience of fighting enemies on his level who were more numerous than he was. And seeing as the clones could gain his memories whenever he killed one Naruto figured this little exercise was better than just training with regular people, seeing as if he attacked one of them he couldn't use fatal techniques. Nor would they be going for the killing blow either. Naruto and all his clones knew that fighting animals in the forest along the way would only serve to make things more difficult. So here he was panting on top of a branch about 200 meters in the air. His stamina had been depleted about 3 minutes ago and he was running on chakra and a bit of health. He knew that he would need to take a break, but his clones weren't going to give him the satisfaction of taking a break in the middle of a deadly training session, so he was going to have to find a way to hide from his clones. Speaking of which Naruto heard one of his clones approaching, and he took off from his branch, using his wires to propel him around the forest. Naruto, health 1000 1640, pack rate 1000 9200, stamina 0, 0, 0, 0, 80, 200. Naruto wasn't allowed to use any military munitions pills because this was a training exercise, so that was out of the options. Naruto quickly used the wires to propel himself towards the ground, and his claws shifted into giant shovels before he began tunneling into the dirt at a rapid pace. His clone noticed this and quickly followed, using his own wires to propel himself into the hole. The clone quickly found, much to his dismay, that the real Naruto had somehow dug an entire maze of underground tunnels. The clone was then blindsided by the real Naruto tunneling underneath it, and it quickly popped into a puff of smoke. Naruto turned around and tunneled as far down as he dared. He then sealed up the tunnel and leaned against the dirt wall. This was going to be his only break the clones were going to get to the tunnel if a few minutes, and then they were going to copy his shovel technique, and he was going to get found. Naruto sat in the darkness, the only sound was his deep breaths and his heart beating. Naruto had discovered a few months ago that it was possible to shift his crystals while they were already on him. 
So instead of having just claws on him, he could have shovels, spears, blades, anything that didn't have moving parts on it. Naruto was absolutely devastated when he learned he couldn't have drills on his hands. But it was a work in progress. He was going to get those goddamn drills if it cost Kakashi his entire porn stash. And why Kakashi's porn stash? Because it was the one thing that Naruto would burn without feeling guilty. Five minutes later, and his stamina had recovered by almost 400 and was rapidly increasing, but the clones were here, he could feel the vibrations of them digging. So not wasting any time Naruto blitzed up to the top of the mini maze that he'd made. Naruto shot out of the ground, hopping a few clones before he rocketed away through the trees. Clones were hot on his trail, and Naruto was breathing heavy all over again. So instead of running across the treetops Naruto let his wires do all the work, pumping more and more chakra into them, seeing as it didn't take that much chakra and he was slowly escaping the clones. Damn. He gives the go ahead to beat him up, but they didn't have to be that ruthless. Naruto just hoped that they would let up soon. Anko Mitarashi was enjoying her stroll through the forest of death, it was a calming and relaxing place for her to be by herself for a while. That was until she sent somebody come at her with a jonin pace. She didn't put up her guard and instead pulled out one more stick of dango before she was going to go buy more. That was until the person that she sensed blew by her and scattered her dango all over the tree limb that she was on. It was time for that bastard to die. Nobody messed with her dango and lived to tell the tale. She was about to take off after that bastard before a horde of them came rumbling through the treetops. She reached out her hand and grabbed one out of the air. You tell the bastard up front to stop or I will find him and I will castrate him with a rusty kunai. Anko screamed into the clone's ear before it dispelled in a puff of smoke and the rest of the clones followed suit, not wanting to suffer the horrible fate that the original was most likely going to get put through. The original stopped on a tree limb and quickly turned around to meet with the angry woman. He slowly approached the woman, making sure that his crystal and ice armor was all off before he made contact with her. Naruto cautiously approached the angry woman before she launched off of the tree limb toward Naruto, before landing a solid punch to his face that caused him to be forced off of the tree limb into a trunk before he landed on the ground. God damn it she's got a mean punch. Naruto cursed before he got to meet with the woman who just socked him in the face. Brat do you know what the hell you just did, one of the worst crimes you can commit in Konoha. You ruined perfectly good dango. Anko shouted at Naruto who just looked at her like she was from outer space. Who are you? Naruto asked before the woman smirked, it was a smirk that told Naruto he was going to lose a lot of blood soon. I am the incredibly sexy and single Kanoichi Anko Midarashi. Somehow a banner dropped in from the branches above and confetti went flying all over the place. Naruto's eyes widened a little bit, it was like his party bomb only without the bits of cake and paint. Okay I apologize for ruining your food, but I've got to go. Naruto turned around and was about to launch himself through the treetops back towards Konoha. Sadly Anko didn't have those same plans, and she stopped him with a single hand on his shoulder. Somehow facing down this one Kanoichi was scarier and more difficult than facing down an army of his own clones. No, I think that you brat are going to come with me, and you are going to buy me as much sake and dango as I freaking want. And if you don't, I'm going to hunt you down, and I'm going to castrate you with the rusty kunai. Of course. Right this way. Naruto chuckled nervously, very nervously before he took off at a solid tune in pace, Anko following him all the way. Luckily, he had a very fat wallet for somebody of his age, he was pretty sure that he could afford all of the dango wanted to eat. Half an hour later both Naruto and Anko were sitting at a booth in the dango restaurant that Anko loved so much. So tell me kid, you're like 5, 7. Doesn't matter, but what were you doing in the forest of death with a horde of shadow clones after your ass? Anko said before grabbing another stick of dango. I was training. That's some pretty hardcore training for a 7 year old. Anko commented before finishing off one more stick of dango. Like I said, that is hardcore training, for what the academy. Seriously you could be in the academy already if you can make shadow clones and train in the forest of death all by yourself. But that brings up the question, how do you know shadow clone? Naruto laughed nervously before he placed another thousand ryo on the table. Will this say no more questions? Naruto asked and Anko shook her head, he sighed before he pulled out a total of five thousand ryo and slid it over to Anko, no more questions, and don't tell anybody. No guarantees kid. Anko said cheerfully before Naruto pulled out another 2000, this says guarantee. Naruto smirked, he had thousands more Ryo to play around with, and if he used it all, he'd most certainly cause inflation or something like that. Naruto got up and left Anko there to play around with her new 7000 Ryo, all that money, and yeah she'd shut up for a day or two. She was going to eat so much dango that she was going to probably gain 50 pounds. Naruto walked down the street, his wallet was 7000 lighter, but he didn't mind all that much he gained so much from all the dungeons that he'd beaten that he could afford to spend a lot of money making it so that Naruto could pay for the overpriced gear that most of the shops would sell him. 
He was a little miffed that Anko had interrupted his training session for something as pointless as Dango, but he wouldn't let that get him down. He'd just go to a different training ground and train there, and with that in mind, Naruto took to the rooftops and headed towards the nearest training ground. Five minutes later he walked into the clearing and training ground 7, only to find that somebody was already there. Naruto watched as the boy who was already there beat on the training post and practiced his shuriken. Naruto walked silently up to the boy and watched him from five feet away. The boy was oblivious to the world as Naruto watched him with his shuriken active through the contacts. Naruto could see all that the boy was doing wrong, his footing was a bit off, and when he threw a shuriken or a kunai, his hand would go a bit further than needed causing the weapons to go at odd angles, sometimes when he threw them. You know if you put that much power into throwing your kunai they don't go straight. Naruto suddenly spoke up, causing the boy to suddenly spin around and throw a kunai at Naruto who caught it out of the air. That wasn't nice you know, I was just trying to help you. Naruto said before handing the kunai back. I don't need your help. I can do this on my own. That's no good, if you don't learn to accept help from others, then you won't get any better. Naruto shook his head. How do you know that? The boy retorted stashing the kunai his pouch and crossing his arms. Because training alone can only make mistakes that you make when practicing techniques worse on the battlefield. So if you throw a kunai wrong in training then most likely you'll throw a kunai wrong in the middle of battle and get yourself killed. Who are you? Isn't polite to give your name first. Naruto smirked before crossing his arms. Sasuke Chiha. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Both boys stared at each other for what seemed like hours, Naruto smirking with Sasuke scowling. Only when somebody else entered the clearing did both boys' gaze leave each other. Two girls had entered the clearing, both of them shared Sasuke's dark hair and black eyes. One of the girls was a little taller than Sasuke and looked like a female version of the grumpy boy. The other girl was much taller than all of them and looked like she could be Sasuke's mother. The two girls walked over to the two boys and Naruto smiled and waved. Hello are you here for lil Sasu over here? Naruto smiled at both of the girls. Are you a friend of Sasuke's? Sasuke I didn't know that you had a friend. The woman said smiling at Sasuke before she turned to Naruto, I'm sorry, my name's Makoto I'm Sasuke's mother. This is Sayori his older sister. My name's Naruto, I was just giving lil Sasu some tips over here on how to throw a kunai properly. Naruto just motioned towards the targets which were filled with holes from the kunai and shuriken, as well as the training post and Sasuke's red knuckles. Sasuke. You know what I say about training this young, you should just wait until the academy. Makoto scolded Sasuke. But how else am I going to beat Itachi? Sasuke argued throwing his hand into the air. Naruto frowned and kept his arms crossed, if you want to beat this Itachi person, then you better find a reason in doing it, otherwise you're never going to get better than him. Gaining power for the sake of gaining power isn't going to get you anywhere. Then why do you train? To gain respect. Naruto stated simply before he smiled again, now onto better topics than something this depressing. His smile seemed infectious, and the only person who didn't seem to cheer up was Sasuke, the poor downer. Sasuke we came here to get you for dinner, we thought about eating out tonight. But it would be rude for me not to invite your new friend. Makoto smiled. Yeah, I was thinking about that nice place run by the Akamichis, they have great food. Sayuri cheerfully chipped in, you know the place that made those steaks and tomatoes that you absolutely love. Sasuke seemed to perk up at the word tomato, and Naruto quietly filed that away for later use against him. So what do you say Naruto, would you like to come with us for dinner? I don't think I could intrude on your family time, it would be rude of me. Naruto shook his head, they were a family and he didn't want to intrude. Oh it'll be fun, come on Naruto. You're Sasuke's friend and any friend of Sasuke can come with us. Makoto smiled, and Naruto found that in the smile she seemed to say, Sasuke needs more friends, so come along please. Naruto sighed before he gave in, okay Makoto smiled and Sayori cheered, it looked like both of Makoto's children needed more friends. They must have scared away most of the other children or something. It was most likely Sasuke's emo demeanor and Sayori's overly cheerful demeanor. Naruto shrugged, let's go. And with that Naruto, Sasuke, Sayori and Makoto all headed to dinner together. It had been almost two years since Naruto had taken Lil Sasu under his wing and the boy was improving immensely. Seriously, Lil Sasu could keep up with Naruto for an hour and 30 minutes before he couldn't go any longer. But then again Naruto was ruthless with his shadow clones. He didn't even need to use his wires, his fighting style was brutal all on its own, because Sasuke found it impossible to counter with his own interceptor Ichiha style. Sasuke didn't have the Sharingan, like Naruto did, and found it rather difficult to counter Naruto's unpredictable moves. Naruto over the last two years had not been lazy either, he'd been mainly focused on his Fuinjutsu, and with almost 20 shadow clones working on it around the clock, Naruto had made some pretty heavy advancements. But sadly his level had remained static, but his relationship with Mikoto and Sayori had not. 
Makoto was the mother that Naruto never had, kind, but she could be strict when she needed to, and Sayuri was the sister he never had the best mix of caring and fun loving. Little Sasu was the grumpy younger brother that he wanted but could do without, but Naruto was sure that secretly Lil Sasu adored him. That theory had yet to be proven, but Naruto was absolutely sure that it was true. Hunch harder. Are you trying to give me a massage? Because if this is the extent of what you can do then you might as well give up. Naruto roared at Sasu who only tried harder and harder to beat Naruto into a pulp, all of his attempts of course were failing. Naruto grinned as he grabbed Sasuke's wrist, flipped him up into the air and slammed him hard into the ground. Naruto jumped back as Sasu got up from the attack and again rushed at Naruto. TSKTSK Lil Sasu if you expect my tactic to work on me, then you've got another thing coming at you. Naruto smirked and Sasu growled before throwing a wide right punch. Naruto returned the favor in kind with a brutal uppercut to the chin that clipped Sasuke, but it knocked him off balance. Naruto did a low spin kick and knocked Sasuke into the air before Naruto got up and caught him just before he hit the ground. Hearing clapping behind them, both boys turned around to see Mikoto and Sayuri having a small picnic at the edge of the clearing, and Naruto and Sasu got up to go join them for lunch. Sitting down, Naruto thanked Mikoto as she passed him a pair of chopsticks and a cup of ramen that already had ramen noodles in it, half ready he just needed to wait another minute. However Sasu proceeded to dig into the tomatoes that he so loved, Sayuri dug into the sweets that she loved, Mikoto just sat back and watched as everybody ate. Sasuke over the years had lightened up around Naruto, and things weren't as tense as they were that first night they ate dinner together. And on that night Naruto found that Sayuri would be going to the academy with him, and they would spend the next four years in the academy with her, and whoever else was going to the academy next year. He'd also found out that Itachi was Sasuke's older brother, and until he became Anbu, he'd been the best brother that anybody could have had. But when he got into Anbu, Sasuke's father had started looking at Sasuke and wondered why Sasuke wasn't a genius like his older brother. So trying to get his father's recognition Sasuke started training. Then Naruto came along and for two years they trained together, and Sasuke was becoming more like the bundle of joy that he used to be with Naruto slowly replacing Itachi as his older brother figure. Naruto after his ramen finished, began digging into it slurping down the noodles as fast as he possibly could. Sayuri and Sasuke stopped eating only to watch in horrid fascination as Naruto finished off the noodles and gave a great belch. Naruto one of these days you are going to choke and I'm going to laugh at you if you don't slow down when you eat. How can you know that ramen is so great when you don't even stop to taste your food? Mikoto laughed a bit at Naruto who was suddenly left with no more lunch to eat while Sasuke and Sayuri finished their food. Okay Sayuri you are going to participate in a training exercise that only the most fit ninjas can take part in. Naruto's face suddenly got super serious and his tone indicated that he wasn't messing around. Naruto put his hand on Sasuke's shoulder and then yelled you're it before running away. It took Sasuke and Sayuri a few moments to realize what Naruto had done before they stood up and Sasuke started chasing Sayuri in an attempt to catch her and not be it. He knew that he had no chance of catching Naruto and there was little chance that he could catch Sayuri, but he was willing to try. Sasuke and Sayuri both dashed towards the end of the clearing and headed into the woods in a game of tag. While Mikoto and Naruto watched them go. You know that those are for Sayuri right? Mikoto asked Naruto as he began chowing down on both hers and Sasuke's lunch. But Naruto didn't seem to care, and it wasn't until after all the food was gone that he spoke up. Yeah it's for them, but they're not here, and it would be a waste to just let food spoil out in the open like this. But anyways, would you like some help with packing all of this up? Naruto smiled before he helped Mikoto pack up all of the dishes and the cloth, before making sure she was set to head back to the small section of the village that was reserved for the Ichiha. Naruto however stood in the middle of the training field, waiting for both Sasuke and Sayuri when they would burst into the clearing. He waited for three minutes before they dashed into the clearing, Sasuke still on Sayuri's tail. Both of the stopped and looked at Naruto before looking around for Mikoto. Where's mother? Sasuke asked. She headed back to your home, however those sweets and tomatoes were absolutely delicious. Naruto smirked as he watched both of the Achiha siblings rage at Naruto eating their lunch. That was our lunch. Sayuri shouted at Naruto who simply shrugged before smirking, it wasn't yours the moment you ran off in a game of tag. Naruto was forced to dodge a hail of kunai from both Sayuri and Sasuke as they tried to get the person responsible for stealing the rest of their lunch, and when they had run out of throwable weapons, they both engaged in a round of tojutsu, two on one, with Naruto kicking both of their butts. It wasn't funny how badly he was winning, so Sasuke broke off of the tojutsu and jumped back to quickly collect the shuriken and kunai that littered the ground, while his sister who was better at tojutsu than him, tried to defend against Naruto's onslaught of attacks. Naruto was then forced to dodge as the combination of both Sasuke and Sayuri started to make a comeback. It was hard to fight a tojutsu battle at the same time that he was dodging kunai and shuriken. 
but Naruto remedied the problem when he caught a kunai and threw it back at Sasuke, who led up a storm of flying objects for a second and gave Naruto the opportunity to put Sayori down. Then he worked Sasuke and he went down relatively fast. Now you see why me taking your lunch was inevitable. Wahahahaha. You can't win I'm too powerful. Naruto switched into his best villain voice and laughed at the two siblings who slowly got up and began laughing with Naruto before Sayori launched a surprise punch at Naruto, who easily caught the sloppy punch. Beware Captain Tomato and Sweets Girl, the schoolyard bully is here to liberate you of all your food. Naruto laughed again, this time at the silly names he gave everybody on the spot, before he twisted Sayori's arm and somehow launched her into the air before catching her princess style and then letting her stand up on her feet. Sayori crossed her arms and gave Naruto the evilest glare that she could, Sasuke did the exact same thing, and Naruto just smiled and laughed. I'm going to be visiting Aurora if you two want to come with me. Who's Aurora? Sayori stopped giving Naruto the evil glare and asked suddenly super curious. She's a fox kit that I found a few years ago and I handed to the Inuzukas so that they could train her a bit, seeing as she was a wild animal. I've been paying for her food and the few years of training that she's had so far. It's something like 1000 a week that they asked for. Come on if they're in a good mood you might get to pet some of the puppies. Naruto shouted the words pet the puppies over his shoulder as he turned and ran towards the Inuzuka estate and Sayori despite before worn out a few moments before took off after Naruto, wanting to pet the puppies. Poor Sasuke was left in the dust and then when he realized that he needed to catch up, Sasuke took off towards his sister and his new older brother figure. When he caught up Naruto laughed and apologized before giving the tired young boy a piggyback ride. Naruto and Sayori took off at a light pace over the rooftops to avoid the street traffic and made their way towards the Inuzuka compound, which was a fair distance from the training ground that they were using. When they got there, Naruto put Sasuke down and knocked on the gates. They met with the guard and he was kind enough to let them into the compound and lead them to Tsum, who was the clan head. If it isn't my favorite brat. Tsum greeted Naruto with a large smile and he brought more brats. That's a surprise. This is Sayori and Sasuke. Sayori came because I said the word puppies and Lil Sasu came because he didn't want to get left behind. Speaking of little people, how's Lil Kibi doing? Soom chuckled at the name that Naruto had given Kiba, and his nickname for Akamaru was a Akapapi, the brat's fine, now come along Aurora's been excited for this visit for a while. Little thing's been the sweetest thing here at the compound, but she's got a temper. How so? If you piss her off, she turns into a buzz of claws and teeth. Kiba and Akamaru learned that the hard way. Both of them are missing chunks of hair and they stay away from her kennel like it's the plague. Pretty funny if you ask me. Tsum laughed as she led the way to the kennels, she was the only one who had the key to Aurora's kennel. Oh by the way brat, payment's overdue brat. That's 1000 Ryo due right now before I let you see the fox. Tsum smiled before turning around and sticking her hand out for the Ryo that Naruto owed her. It was only a few seconds that the money was in her hand, with 500 extra. Sorry about that, I've been training Lil Sasu, so my schedule's been pretty packed lately. Naruto smiled as Tsum turned back around and again led the way towards the kennel with Aurora in it. When they got there, which wasn't long Tsum opened up the cage and Naruto was knocked over by the red fox that was half the size of the Avinyazuka adult dogs. Aurora had grown in the past few years that she'd been at the care of the Inuzuka and now she was long enough to lay on both of Naruto's shoulders and wrap her tail around his neck like a scarf. Hey Aurora, I missed you too. Naruto lay on the ground while Aurora licked at his face. Finally getting Aurora off of him, Naruto held Aurora up before setting her down on the ground where she then proceeded to jump up onto Naruto's shoulder before licking him on the face once more. I'll tell you what, go take Aurora out for the day, but bring her back before sunset. She needs more exercise anyways. Tsum said before turning towards Sayori, so you want to pet the puppies now? Naruto chuckled before slipping something into Sayori's pocket and then he disappeared. Sayori found that what Naruto had slipped into her pocket was almost 5,000 Ryo, and a note that said, give her the money it was 5 minutes that Sayori was then petting the puppies in the kennels. Triple X few hours later Triple X, Naruto was resting on top of the Hokage monument, petting Aurora's head as she slept on his lap. The breeze was soft, everything was nice. He would be getting into the academy next year, as well as the dragon egg that he'd gotten from his fight with Shax. That would be hatching next year, and he hadn't really found anything on how to feed a dragon. He didn't know if it was going to hunt out the local population of food from around Kanoha or if all the produce was going to be gone within the month. He didn't know if it ate anything at all. Naruto looked at the sun, which was quickly hiding behind the horizon, and decided that he needed to take Aurora back to the Inuzuka kennels. It had been fun roughhousing with her and then resting and relaxing on the monument, but now it was time for the day of fun to end. Making a shadow clone Naruto had it gently take Aurora and then take her back to the Inuzukas. 
it was at this time that Naruto's shadow clones, the ones working one fuinjutsu dispelled and left Naruto with a slight headache and the knowledge of what they had discovered that day. It wasn't much, they'd figured out the problem he had to the largest storage seal. And with a few different symbols the clones had been able to make the largest storage seals to date. It would be able to hold quite literally, metric tons. The best thing about the scroll was that it was the size of a regular ceiling scroll, only a lot more complicated, and when you looked at it, the entire thing appeared to be one giant black circle. That's how tiny his clones had gotten the seals down to, they were almost small enough that Naruto couldn't even tell there were seals there. Naruto immediately hopped off of the monument to dash home, which was still Kakashi's apartment. Kakashi would be impressed by this, he knew that Naruto was into sealing and all that, but he didn't know how advanced Naruto was in the sealing arts. He knew that Naruto could draw up basic explosive seals and basic storage seals, but he didn't know that over the two years Naruto had been practicing, he could make flash seals, smoke bomb seals, advanced explosive shrapnel seals and his personal favorite, paint bomb seals. He could also make basic chakra nullification seals, paralysis seals, and basic memory lapse seals. All of which were self-explanatory by the names of them, and Naruto kept a few of them on hand just in those small cases that there were emergencies. He'd also remembered that he hadn't been using his menu and gamer ability for a while. He would need to get back into the swing of grinding and farming monsters when he got into the academy, seeing as the level limit would be raised from 30 to either 60 or 100. He didn't remember, but it was probably a good idea to check his exp. Pool. The menu opened in front of Naruto, and he scrolled down from the main menu to check his exp. Pool. Current exp. Pool 50,000. Naruto did the math and compared it to the way that he noticed the amount to level up grow and found that when the level cap was raised, he would grow almost 7 levels, which wouldn't get him that extra token that he really wanted, but it would indeed give him a lot of growth, but it wouldn't get him the token that he wanted. And he couldn't seem to get any achievements that would get him an extra token either. Closing the menu, Naruto picked up his pace a bit and quickly got back to the apartment to find Kakashi sitting on the couch, relaxing. Hey Naruto, so how was your day? Fine thanks for asking, hey stay right there I have something to show you. Kakashi raised his one visible eye as Naruto ran into his bedroom and retrieved a scroll. When Naruto got back to the small living room, he opened the scroll and showed Kakashi the advanced ceiling scroll. Kakashi's eyes widened and for the few times in his life that he wasn't in battle, the scarecrow lifted up his forehead protector and let the implanted Sharingan shine forward. My god Naruto. Have you told the Hokage yet? Nope. Then let's go. Naruto sighed and buried his head in his arms, three godforsaken years. He'd promised himself that he would not use shadow clones and stick it out like Sayori, who sat right next to him, would have to. He was excited for the academy and all, and his level cap would be raised and all that, but he couldn't focus when everything was so boring. Naruto learned by doing not by studying a scroll. He didn't know how Sayori could stay away for all of this. He knew grades were important and he continually aced all his tests and assignments, much to the eternal confusion of his teachers. He was also easily the best of all the third-year students in terms of fighting ability and grades. So obviously Naruto was the first orphan to be the rookie of the year since the time of the fourth Hokage. Of course keeping the title wasn't without challengers, which meant that the entire class wanted his spot at the top. Although most of the boys were either muscles heads or super geniuses and couldn't find that sweet spot in the middle like Naruto had. Although most of the time he blamed luck, having a sister-like figure sitting right next to you all the time nagging for you to get on with your work was a great motivator too. Naruto head up, focus on the board. The teacher is giving a lecture. Sayori smacked Naruto on the head once and he glared at her with the most menacing look that he could generate. Come on, I've got a fox curled around my neck and Sora is sleeping right next to me on the bench and you expect me to pay attention. This is the perfect opportunity to nap. Naruto said the last part a bit loud and the teacher honed in on him like a hawk after its prey. Please tell me Mr. Uzumaki, how is class time the perfect opportunity to nap? Just because your partner Fox and Dragon are snoozing the day away doesn't mean that you can as well. The teacher threw a piece of chalk at Naruto with razor precision, and Naruto caught it and threw it back before the teacher caught it again and resumed writing on the board. Everybody found it hard to believe that he had a dragon, a thought-to-be-extinct race as a partner like the Inuzuka had dogs for partners. The thought was insane, and every time he thought about the reactions Naruto could only laugh. It had been a week into his first year at the Ninja Academy when Sora had hatched on him. Sora who was sitting next to him snorted in his sleep and shifted positions. He was a tiny western-style dragon, but he was fast enough to outrun the dead last of the academy students, and he was strong enough to tear through large branches with ease. His wings were folded up along his back, and his scales glowed a bright sky-blue color, hence the name Sora, or Sky. He had two little horns next to his mouth like little tusks and bright blue eyes just like Naruto. 
Naruto had been ecstatic when he learned that dragons, being partial summons when they were born they fed off of the chakra of the nearest person until they were old enough to produce their own chakra at a steady pace, which was two, and then they lived off of their own chakra which they used in flight. Naruto had also learned that dragons lived off of their chakra and didn't need to eat. And when he got into the academy Kakashi had let him take Aurora off the Inuzuka's hands and start taking care of her, which meant feeding her, playing with her, cleaning up after her. All that fun stuff but he got two battle partners. Aurora was fast and had sharp claws which could turn her into a buzzsaw of pain and destruction, so she could dart in and out of attacks. Sora however when in battle liked to latch onto his back and it allowed for Naruto to gain his favorite advantage in a battle, air superiority. It was the most wonderful thing when you could fly. Not only could Naruto initiate a link to Sora and feed him chakra so they could fly longer and faster, giving the dragon chakra could allow for Sora to use attacks over his shoulder. Due to his snake-like head, when Sora attached himself to Naruto's back, he could still see over Naruto's shoulder, and when he had enough chakra Sora could actually breath fire. It was a nice surprise to enemies who were actually capable of getting close to him when he was in the air. And Naruto's chakra had taken a huge leap from when he just started the academy. Instead of in the 7000s he started the academy with, Naruto had jumped with his growth. Now it was nearing the 20000s. He had found that he had cage level reserves even in his control wasn't all that up to par. So Naruto had stopped leveling up his techniques, although he kept the shadow clones working on the seals because it was so useful. Yeah he remembered back to the time that he showed Kakashi his hyper storage seal. Kakashi had taken him to see the Hokage and Naruto had actually gained an income from making the newly dubbed hyper storage seals. Author style. Flashback technique. Naruto and Kakashi jumped from the rooftops, heading at a relatively relaxed pace for the seriousness of the situation. Naruto had actually made a seal that could seal literal tons of items. It just appeared to a black circle on a ceiling scroll to the brief glance, but to people who took a closer look, they would see the delicate yet hardy micro seals that covered the paper. Kakashi was amazed, stunned, that a boy as young as Naruto could make such an advanced storage seal, something that seal masters such as Jiraiya hadn't even attempted before. But then again Jiraiya was more focused on sealing in battles and trying to counter Orochimaru's curse seal to even bother with making these types of seals. Both Naruto and Kakashi stopped when they realized that they were about to jump into the wall of the Hokage Tower. They calmly made their way into the tower and walked past the secretary who was so swamped with paperwork that she didn't even notice that they were there. Knocking on the door to the Hokage office they waited until they heard the customary come in from the Hokage before they entered. They were greeted with the Hokage office in all of its large glory. The Hokage was almost buried with all the paperwork that surrounded him. Ah, Naruto and Kakashi. Let me guess, Naruto pranked the Hyugas again, or was it the Naras this time? No Hokage, Naruto here has something he would like you to see. Kakashi patted Naruto on the back and pushed him up the desk. Hey old man, take a look. I made it myself. Naruto gave his trademark smile and passed the scroll on to Hiruzen, and then laughed as his eyes seemingly expanded in his head. Is this what I think it is? Hiruzen closed the scroll but held on to it. Sure is old man, it's micro sealing. I think I'll call that my patented hyper storage scroll. Naruto laughed and plucked the scroll from Hiruzen's light grip. That's amazing Naruto, I didn't know that you were this talented in seals. I might buy that scroll off of you. The Hokage smiled at his pseudo grandson. I might let you buy it, but then again I might not. Naruto grin seemed a little more sinister as if he was about to wring every last Ryo off of the Hokage. Tell you what Naruto, why don't you try making a few more of those and selling them to a ninja supply store. It could give you a bit more income than what you're getting from your monthly allowance. Naruto tilted his head in thought as if considering the idea, yeah sure, I'll give it a try. Although making micro seals is a time-consuming process, it might be a while until I come up with enough to sell. I don't doubt it Naruto, sealing takes time, but micro sealing can take months to years to complete. Thanks for the idea old man. See you around. Naruto smiled and waved before he and Kakashi left the office. Saratobi turned his attention towards his paperwork and found a note on his desk. You know, using a special technique called Shadow Clone might help. Naruto, P.S. You can buy me all you can eat Raymond at Ichiraku's tomorrow. Hiruzen stared at the paper before smiling and looking out the window at the sunset that was slowly ending. It was a fine day to be Hokage, he had finally figured out, with the help of Naruto, the secret weakness of paperwork. Shadow clones would be from then on, the cage's best friend. Author style. Flashback release. Naruto smiled, it was crippling for the old man's wallet, but Naruto enjoy every last second of eating all of the Raymond that Ichiraku's had. Of course, he had a stomachache for a few hours afterwards, but it was worth it for the glorious thing that it Raymond. Oh sweet wonderful Raymond, how you swim in a bowl of heavenly broth and you dance upon the taste buds of man's tongues for minutes on end. Glorious Raymond how we, humble man, are slaves to the wonderful tastes of you and all of your Raymond glory. 
Naruto just coughed once and shrugged the thought out of his head, he needed to pay attention, or the teacher was going to call him out and ask him a hundred different questions that although were going to be easy to answer, they were going to be troublesome to bother with. Mr. Yuzumaki, please dig your face out from your elbow, you look like you are ready to blow a raspberry, and that wouldn't be very nice now would it? The teacher smirked when Naruto rested his chin on the desk instead of in his elbow and glared. Naruto began counting how many times the teacher would piss him off, and he would answer with many different types of pranks. He was a famous prankster who could outrun the Anbu and hide from the most experienced trackers. And of course, he could do it with two animal companions and burnt orange on his hoodie. It seemed like an eternity later when the teacher put down his book and dismissed the class. Hallelujah. Praise the gods and see you hopefully never again because Naruto Uzumaki is leaving the building. Naruto stood up and shouted before diving out an open window and he disappeared. Leaving a disappointed Sayuri who was convinced that Naruto had forgotten about Sasuke's birthday. Naruto appeared seconds later to pick up a sleeping Aurora and Sora from their spots before he jumped out a closed window this time and still disappeared without breaking the glass. Said Naruto in fact had not forgotten and instead was searching for a suitable dungeon to hopefully farm and gain a wonderful item that he knew his pseudo brother would love. He knew Sasuke liked tomatoes and training and weapons, he couldn't forget about the weapons. But he couldn't give him anything from the spiders because it wouldn't sit well with him if he gave Lil Sasu a poisoned weapon that could potentially kill himself or others. Sure weapons were meant to kill, but he wanted to get something that was super awesome and cool and could be used in spars without the risk of killing other students. Naruto knew that Sasuke preferred shorter blades Naruto knew that, he wanted something that was longer than a meter, but not longer than a meter and a half, which was short compared to some of the other swords that ninjas used. Naruto knew that the swords he used were as tall and as wide as he was and would only get larger in size as his height and strength grew. There should have a compensation joke in there somewhere, but Naruto wasn't going to laugh at himself until he got a good gift for Sasuke. And then he saw the mystery dungeon, it wasn't anything that he'd seen before and there was a ticking clock next to it. Limited time dungeon here now. Only available today. Naruto didn't like going into dungeons without much information, but he'd done it once and Kumo, and although he almost died Naruto had gained a lifelong friend quite a few materials and modifiers. Sora poked his head up over Naruto's shoulders. Sora was sitting right where he liked, his tail wrapped around Naruto's waist and his four claws attached each to the left and right shoulders and the spot right above his hips. Aurora was sleeping around his neck like a warm and fluffy scarf, but she was also looking at the screen Naruto had up. Sora nodded and Aurora went back to sleep, so he took that as a yes. Naruto pressed enter and his world faded to black before it returned in the form of a screen. You are entering the Frost Mountain Dungeon. Average enemy level 30 to 40, Oz feature is allowed. Naruto smiled, this would be an absolute cakewalk. His current level was 45 and he was ready to roll. Shadow clones were awesome, and Makoto was appreciating all that Naruto was doing, which was basically setting up the room for them to celebrate Sasuke's birthday in. She smiled and directed some clones to put up decorations on the wall and help some clones balance on top of each other as they began setting up a banner on the wall that said, Happy Birthday Sasuke. Makoto smiled, this was going to be a wonderful birthday. This was going to be a wonderful birthday for Sasuke alright, Naruto was getting all sorts of sweet loot from the frost bats, but it wasn't funny. Frost fangs, frost wings, frost claws. All of them had some sort of frost effect whether it was resisting frost and low temperatures, frost fangs, or allowing the user a basic control over frost, such as creating weak shields or armor, frost wings, or whether it was freezing opponents when you did slashing damage, frost claws. Naruto was pretty sure that he could get an item that Sasuke would absolutely love and he wasn't off the first floor yet. The entire caves were covered in a thick layer of ice and it made it pretty hard to get traction, so Naruto being the genius that he was, or that he wants you to believe, used his crystal release and created small little spikes on the bottom of his feet. This helped him get some traction on the ice and allowed him to move easier on it. Although he ended up using a fusion of ice and crystal in order to kill enemies from a distance. The ice bats were pathetic for something that was level 30. Yet Naruto felt like it couldn't get any better, the dungeon was giving him free goodies for almost no cost. But there was a nagging feeling at the back of his mind, one that told him he was going to get screwed over by the mini-boss, or he was going to be late for the party. And with those quiet thoughts in mind, literally, Naruto picked up the pace. Still collecting money and materials as he could, but he started actively looking for the exit. Forming a spear in hand, it was a swirl of ice and crystal combining the light blue of his eyes and the lime green that his crystals had turned into recently, he let the spear fly and it impaled a frost bat and then stabbed another in midair, killing two with one shot. Naruto had noticed that lately, the spears that he normally controlled and shot at people glowed. It made a cool effect and he wondered if he could get the spears to look like bolts of light shooting at people. 
Forming a spear out of the lime green crystal, Naruto overcharged it with his chakra and manipulated the spear, so it flew at the remaining bats that were close to him. The crystal spear was glowing with chakra, and it did indeed look like a spear of light heading at his foes. The spear impaled the rest of the bats, swerving and twisting every time that it missed a bat, and Naruto was nearly jumping up and down with excitement. Due to the 1.5 update, special actions can now create skills. Special actions created skill crystal release. Light spear overcharges a crystal spear with chakra, enough to make it glow like a spear made of light, although the spear is still there the aura of light around the spear is capable of shredding anything that comes close to it. Special actions created skill crystal release. Homing light spear light spears that are capable of following and tracking opponents as long as they have chakra and direction from the generator of the spears. He'd forgotten that the game had updated a few months ago and it had given him some new features like the party system and the special skills creator. But Naruto was sure that it had added even more dungeons. But shaking his head away from the new skill, Naruto moved on with new vigor. He had a deadline to meet and he wasn't going to be late for the party. Sora and Aurora were both wrapped up in a layer of his crystals, which were an insulator to heat and didn't let the cold in. Naruto had on a layer of crystal armor and he was pretty warm even though it was below freezing temperatures in the cave. Continuing on deeper into the cave, Naruto received a message telling him that he was now on the second floor. So Naruto opened his menu and checked the time, he had 5 hours until the party and the first time that he entered a dungeon that had the exact same time shift as the outer world, he'd stayed until almost midnight. Of course he hadn't been as smart as he was now and he didn't have the strength he had now. The little boy that Naruto used to be could not compete with the capable young man that Naruto was now. Naruto walked through the new halls of the dungeon, which were that of a frozen mansion. Everything was covered in a layer of ice, but he could still see the torn up carpet, marble pillars, and frozen drapes. This level had a eerie feeling to it that the last floor did not have, but Naruto enjoyed exploring an adventure. Naruto walked around the corner and was greeted with the most wondrous of sights, a pack of snow-white wolves growling and snarling at him. Naruto smirked and formed several spears behind him and overcharged them with chakra creating his light spears before the wolves launched themselves at him and the spears flew at the wolves. And the clones were done setting up the room, all that was left was to get the food cooked before Sasuke got home. Hopefully Sayori was doing her job and dragging the boy all over Konoha into shops and maybe she was spending a bit of time training with him. She just needed to distract him for five more hours so that Naruto could get a present and they could get the food all ready. Naruto walked calmly down the frozen halls, the green crystals that acted as an armor glittered in the light that reflected off the ice. He had wondered where the light in the dungeons had come from, but he could never really find where it was. He was just left to assume that everything in the dungeon produced light or that his eyes were affected when entering a dungeon. But that settled, Naruto made his way over the icy mansion pathways. He had figured out where the mini-boss was, but he had not figured out where the key that he needed to get into the mini-boss room was. That was new, he had not had to collect a key to get into the mini-boss room before, but he guessed that the dungeon was special because of that. Naruto trudged down a corridor and out onto a balcony before observing the mansion courtyard that the balcony overlooked. Down below there was a giant courtyard that was the size of a large forest clearing. He couldn't see above the third floor, seeing as he was on the second floor, but Naruto could tell that the second floor was quite extensive. And what it lacked in enemies, seeing as he only had seen a few packs of frost wolves. He had seen on a balcony back quite a ways that he was truly on a mountain or more like a large, very 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 large plateau. The top of the mountain from what he could see was completely flat and he guessed that the top was going to be the third or fourth floor. But Naruto couldn't think about the size of this particular dungeon because he turned around and jogged to the end of the hall, he wanted to conserve his stamina for the mini-boss. But he had to increase his time, the first level lulled him into a false sense of time, like he could do this within the hour, but seeing the size of the mansion and the fact that he had actually had to find a key worried him up. He would probably miss the party. And with that horrifying though in mind, Naruto increased his jog into a run. He had high endurance and over the years it had grown due to him running from the Anbu when he pranked them. Slowing down a bit, Naruto came into a grand ballroom and looked around. It was freaking huge and this was just the upper balcony. There was an entire floor below him and down there Naruto could see a large golden chest that was untouched by all the frost and ice. Naruto turned his head a bit and looked at Sora, who had rest his head on Naruto's shoulders. What do you say buddy, ready to stretch your wings? Naruto smirked when the dragon eagerly spread its wings and nodded his head. Naruto took off into the air, his chakra guiding Sora's wings to where he wanted to go. It was an amazing relationship, Sora provided the wings and occasionally some fire breath and Naruto provided the chakra and direction, and together they both could fly. They glided down the bottom floor and Naruto looked around being careful for enemies. Naruto approached the chest and opened it, although before he could see what was inside it snapped shut and all the doors were quickly blocked by ice. 
Ten ice pillars dropped from the ceiling and shattered on the floor that Naruto was on. Then frost skeletons spawned, and Naruto took off in the air with powerful flaps of Sora's wings. Forming several light spears, Naruto sent them after the skeletons who simply tanked the shots, and Naruto frowned. So Naruto began forming hand seals for the first time in the dungeon and called out, crystal style. Hexagonal shuriken. In Naruto's hand a large shuriken, one as large as he was easily and he threw the thing. The shuriken flew towards the skeletons, who brought up their swords and attempted to block. Sadly, many of the skeletons were separated from their bottoms halves and fell to the ground motionless before they disappeared into colorful pixels. Again Naruto and Sora glided down from their spot in the air. Again he tried to open the chest, and this time it stayed open, but the only thing that Naruto found inside it was an item labeled heart-shaped jewel Naruto thought back to the mini-boss room. It did have a weirdly shaped key slot, and Naruto had a realization, maybe the jewel was the key. He had heard of certain doors that required special items instead of keys, and maybe this was the time. He found it rather quickly, so maybe it couldn't be true, or maybe he just had insane luck. Another look at his time he had 4 hours left. He would have to hurry up. Naruto flew up towards the second floor again, and then took off at a dash, hopefully the heart-shaped jewel would be the key to the mini-boss room, but if it wasn't, he'd end up spending another hour that he couldn't afford in the icy mansion, and it would be really bad if he missed the party. After what seemed an eternity of running, Naruto managed to reach the mini-boss room at the top of a tower in the middle of the mansion. Catching his breath bit, Naruto took the jewel out of his inventory and slid it into the slot on the door, and the door swung open silently and ominously. Inside looked to be a giant bedroom, only it was missing the bed and the dresser and everything that would have made it a bedroom. Naruto only got the feeling that it was supposed to be a bedroom. There was a terrible screeching sound that woke up Aurora and made both Sora and Naruto flinch. Prola the Frozen Serpent has awoken. Level 50, health 20,000, from the ceiling slithered a large serpent, easily enough to swallow Naruto whole. All three of them gulped a bit, Naruto had never wanted to be eaten, and Aurora and Sora didn't like any animal that was that big. Naruto grinned uneasily and began forming hand seals, blazing through them at a high jonin pace. Ice release. Sub-Zero. The ice covering the floor jammed into the bottom of Frolla as it was in mid-air, lunging to swallow Naruto and his companions whole. Naruto jumped out of the way when the serpent broke free and then turned to chase after Naruto, who decided that being in the air was the safest place. Taking to the air, Naruto settled in a nice place right in the middle of the chamber. Only to be surprised when Frolla started slithering up the walls only to leap out at Naruto who quickly swerved underneath the serpent to drive a large spike into it. Yet the spike only broke off against the tough armor of the snake, and Naruto flew up towards the ceiling. If spikes and swords weren't going to do the trick, then Naruto was going to use his next favorite thing, giant hammers. Ice crystal combo release. Fusion hammers. Naruto slammed his hands together in a snake seal, and two large sledgehammers formed in the air only for Naruto to take a hold of them. Sora brought in his wings, and Naruto began falling towards Frolla, who was recovering from the fall that it took. Naruto brought forth his hammers and slammed them both into the back of Frolla. The serpent screeched, and its tail slammed into the ice on the floor. Frolla desperately tried to get away from Naruto who was sitting on its back slamming his hammers into its back at his leisure. It was only when the serpent started slithering up the walls did Naruto take to the air again. The serpent quick to attack, leaped at Naruto who simply threw one of his hammers at it and increased the size of his remaining hammer. The hammer he threw missed, but when he swung his now larger hammer, it struck the serpent in the side of the head and sent it flying into one of the walls before it fell to the ground stunned for the moment. Naruto flew up to the ceiling before dropping, spinning like a hammer buzzsaw, before he struck the serpent's head with his larger hammer. This time, Naruto was trying to get away when the ice on the back of the serpent shot up in spikes to defend Frolla. The serpent seemed to be laughing now, with its weird hisses. Naruto growled before he patted Aurora, ready to get some action Aurora. The fox seemed to smile before it jumped off of Naruto and attached itself to the wall, allowing the crystal armor on it to increase the size of its claws. Spikes shot up from the crystal armor on Aurora's back, and she began spinning like a crystalline buzzsaw of death. Naruto attached his wires to her and sent her flying at the serpent, who was slithering up the wall towards Naruto in the air. At the angle that Aurora was approaching Frolla, she was going to give him an unwanted buzz cut. Naruto increased the size of his hammer until it was easily twice his size, and Aurora spun right through the ice spikes on Frolla's back, allowing for Naruto to come in for the cleanup. Naruto slammed the larger and heavier hammer into Frolla, whose performance in the battle was quite poor. When Frolla fell to the ground, a dark aura appeared around it, and Naruto wasn't having any of that. Crystal release. Cross pillar. Two giant pillars of crystal, both with sharpened ends flew in Frolla in an X formation, before spearing the back of the head and the middle of the serpent who writhed under the giant pillars before remaining still, and then it exploded into pixels. Naruto quickly dropped from his position in the air and grabbed what the mini-boss dropped, it wasn't really anything special. 
He guessed the reason the boss seemed so easy was that he had the ability of flight. The snake was most likely supposed to have the advantage in maneuverability, but with Sora, Naruto could fly and easily dodge the serpent's rather unoriginal attacks. Sighing Naruto continued into a peering passageway onto the top of the mountain. He was right, it was rather flat up on the mountain, other than the mounds of snow that were pilling up in the soft snow that was falling. Naruto sighed, he had no idea where he was supposed to go. Two hours later, Naruto was freaking out, he'd only just entered the last floor of the ice dungeon. The mountaintop had been large, impossibly large, and he had just found the cave that he was supposed to enter. He had to hurry if he was going to make it to the party on time. Rushing through the hallways of the frozen fortress Naruto looked around for anything that could resemble anything close to a boss room, and he nearly passed the giant doors in the hallway to his left. He'd taken almost half an hour to find the spot, and he was freaking out and tired enough to take a million military rations pills. But instead he simply opened the door and fell into the pit that was behind it. Damn it, Sora should have pulled him up if Sora was on his back anymore. Instead both Sora and Aurora were in a floating bubble above him, and he was free-falling. Giant claws formed on his hands and feet, and Naruto angled himself to crash into the wall, before he grabbed a hold of the icy wall with his claws and slowed his descent, before scrambling down the rest of the way, only to find the boss already waiting for him. Bray the undead ice make mage, level, health. Naruto cursed, his partners weren't allowed in this battle, and he was almost out of stamina and chakra. Naruto nervously laughed before the boss set itself to attack. The clock chimed and Sayuri and Sasuke walked in the door to the room, and Sasuke's eyes widened in surprise. His mother was standing there with a party hat and a bit of confetti that she threw in his direction. Happy birthday Sasuke. Mikoto cheered and she smiled at her son who just looked around at the decorations and presents. For me? Sasuke asked, pointing at himself. For you, it's your special day after all little Sasu. Sayuri smiled before patting him on the back, hey where's Naruto, I thought he would be here. Naruto is retrieving a very special present for Sasuke and he said to have cake and presents without him seeing as it would take a bit of time. He's put quite a lot of effort into getting you a nice gift Sasuke, so I hope you can forgive him for being late. Mikoto frowned a bit before her usual soft smile returned to her face. There was a scream outside and all three of them stopped moving before rushing outside to see what the problem was. Outside, covered in blood was Itachi holding an equally bloody sword. A dead man had fallen on the ground, his head severed from his body. Itachi stared at the three, he had only been promised that he could keep Sasuke alive. Sayuri and his mother would both have to die. For Sayuri it was the single most terrifying moment she'd ever had in her entire life. Itachi rushed her with his sword held high, intent on splitting her right half from her left half, and for a moment she could see things clearly. It all happened in slow motion, Itachi's sword came rushing down on her head, and then it was knocked out of the way by something lime green. Like a camera flashing several pictures a second, Naruto with lime green claws on his hands and feet, came out of nowhere to tackle Itachi, and at the same time a few clones came to protect the three who stood there in horror at the murder they just witnessed and their near-death experience. Sayuri felt like she was watching everything while also blinking a million times a second. Stand back, boss has got this. One of the clones said, smiling and hugging Sasuke close. Another comforted Sayuri, and two more helped Mikoto stay on her feet. Naruto however had summoned two swords as large as he was made out of crystals and was on a rapid, rage-filled assault against Itachi. You bastard. How dare you attack them, does your own clan mean nothing to you? You have parents who respect you, siblings who love you. Does that mean nothing to you? Naruto shouted before slamming both of his swords into the ground where Itachi was, but the man was nimble and dodged. Naruto disappeared and appeared behind Itachi, who only blinked in surprise as he ducked and rolled out of the way of a double sword swipe that would have split him into pieces. I was unaware of you having enough speed to make you invisible to even the Sharingan Naruto. Itachi said calmly, but in his mind he thinking about how Naruto could have done that. Maybe the Yuzumaki had some sort of teleportation bloodline, or maybe he could perform the fourth Hokage's signature move. Both sounded crazy, but he couldn't rule anything out just yet. Itachi engaged again, and Naruto forsaking his swords for just carving his opponent up with his razor-sharp claws charged in, rage fueling him at that point. Naruto roared as he shoved his claws towards Itachi's head, intent on cutting off his head. Itachi, making full use of his Sharingan, dodged the claw strike and instead tried to impale Naruto on his sword. Naruto twisted in mid-air and sent a kick towards Itachi's midsection that rattled his spine a bit. Itachi's frown deepened and he realized that he might now be able to beat Naruto into Jutsu. So he jumped back and began forming hand seals, but surprisingly Naruto had done the exact same thing and was copying all his hand seals. Itachi couldn't believe it. It was like Naruto had the Sharingan, but that was impossible because he wasn't of the clan. High release. Fire dragon bullet. 
both Itachi and Naruto shouted in unison before both blowing out giant fire dragons that flew out at the other, intent on killing the other. Both the dragons exploded in the middle of street in the Ichiha district, mildly destroying the buildings around them, a testament to how durable the wood that Kano had used in its construction. Itachi used this time to rush into the smoke thrown up by the explosion, he would kill his sister and mother and leave before Naruto could stall him any longer. But to his surprise, Itachi almost ran into a lime green and sky blue dome. His sister and mother were safe for now, Itachi's mission had failed and some of the family was safe behind the dome and Itachi didn't know if he could break it. He would have to run from Konoha, his mission partly failed in the sense that his sister and mother were still alive. Turning around he ran out of the Ichiha district and fled from Konoha, his mission failed. Naruto however blew away the dust and ran over to Mikoto, Sayori, and Sasuke, who were all shaking in their boots a little bit. They had almost been killed by Itachi their family member. Naruto released the dome and ran up to them, giving them all a great big hug after the crystal claws had faded away. You're okay now, he's not going to hurt you. Naruto rocked the siblings back and forth while his clones helped Mikoto. Why would he do that? It's my birthday, why would he try to kill the clan on my birthday? Sasuke grabbed onto Naruto's shirt and cried, why did this have to happen to him? He was just 10 and yet he had to deal with this kind of tragedy. It just wasn't fair. It's alright now, I'm here for you lil Sasuke, there's nothing to fear. But you're going to have to let go if you want your present. Naruto smiled weakly down at Sasuke who didn't want to let go of him. What is it? Sasuke sniffed, letting go for just a second. Naruto seemingly stuck his hand into thin air and pulled out a sword. The blade was a meter long and made from almost translucent glass looking material. It's a Spartan sword made from malachite, a extremely durable and chakra conductive metal that looks like glass when fired at high temperatures and then cooled in a special mineral water. What's it called? Sasu casked, looking at the sword the massacre almost erased from his mind. That's for you to decide. Naruto smiled and handed the sword over to Sasuke. 